Follow your vibe. Busy. Flavor for every vibe.
that becoming energy producers would be as easy as biting into an apple. Imagine water that is pure and inexhaustible, recycled and accessible everywhere in the world. Imagine, imagine the world of tomorrow, sustainable and desirable. Veolia.
When you have it, you never want to lose it. It's that one trait the rest of us have and the best of us want. It sets the tone, the pace, the flow. Introducing the first raw carbon paddle from Selkirk Sport. Made in the USA and backed by a lifetime warranty. This paddle is engineered to make the execution of precise shots effortless. The Vanguard Control for players who crave unwavering consistency without sacrificing spin. My name is Lee Waters, and I'm a professional pickleball player. My daughter, Anna Lee, is my doubles partner, and her 16th birthday is coming up. It'd be great to get her a car, and Carvana has helped us make that dream come true. They have thousands of options, and I'm a mom, so of course I want Anna Lee to have something safe. Anna Lee has absolutely no idea about this car, so I told her we're going to Carvana's vending machine for a photo shoot. Drum roll. <laughs> I think this belongs to you. Oh my gosh, what? Happy I Sweet 16, Anna Lee. Experience it for yourself at Carvana.com. Intense. Don't let residue ruin your play. Reset, the ultimate solution to bring back the grip, spin, and control to your carbon fiber pickleball paddle. Say goodbye to caked on gunk and slippery surfaces and say hello to a paddle that feels brand new. Backed by science and made with love by passionate pickleball players just like you. Experience the reset difference today. Reset, play hard, play clean. For muscle cramps and spasms, you need fast relief. TheraWorks Relief absorbs quickly with a safe, gentle, non-opioid formula without the mess or strong odor. So get back at it. TheraWorks. TheraWorks. TheraWorks works. Use TheraWorks every day to prevent muscle cramps and spasms. TheraWorks works. Try TheraWorks and get back at it. To make it to the game, it takes dedication and training. To stay in the game, it takes grit and stamina. To win the game, it takes strategy and skill. You keep focus on your approach, drop, and champion shots, and we'll help you stay focused on your strength, flexibility, speed, and downtime. Having a sports medicine partner in your court is key to helping you make it to the game, stay in the game, and win the game. Select Medical is proud to be the exclusive provider of physical therapy of the PPA Tour.
Every time someone tells you they vacation in the same place every year, it should really make you wonder, why? Travel like you mean it with IHG Hotels and Resorts. Pickleball Central, your trusted pickleball experts. Big it up, big it up. Yo, Follow your vibe. Busy. Flavor for every vibe. Imagine that becoming energy producers would be as easy as biting into an apple. Welcome back to the Pickleball Central Indoor USA Championships, powered by Lifetime. I'm Liv Borski, and I'm here with... Blaine Hovenier. And we are your grandstand commentators for today. All right, sounds good. All right, Liv, so who do we have on the court right now? We have Andrea Coop and Zane Navratil versus Brooke Buckner and Colin Schick. Oh, nice. This should be a good matchup. Okay. We got some college tennis players on the court. I know that. Andrea Coop is a UCLA Bruin. And Yeah, that was Andrea Coop right there. Fortunately, volley went into the net, but she played on, under the great coach Stella, Stella Sampras, and we got Colin Schick over there from NC State. It's a great backhand attack from Andrea Coop right there. She can definitely hold her own on the court. There's oh. no doubt about it. No doubt about that. I'm also loving the orange right there. Nice little pop of color. A nice shot from Colin right there. Yes, Colin and Brooke are the North Carolina crew along with Eric Roddy and Jack Sock. You see them traveling nice. together. And I think on the other side of the net, Zane and Andrea, they are the Austin crew. said it hit the bar so yeah a little got replay. a little bounce in the bar right there yeah when that happens they replay the point oh, a little there we go shake and bake for zane oh, himself a little self shake and bake <laughs> kind of like the disguise there on that first ball i thought he was going to go big at brooke Just out. Oh, just back. Oh, nice drop by Andrea there. Great drop. And that was a great return from Brooke right there. Nice and deep. She's got some power.
little miss volley from Colin. I don't expect to see too many of those, but it's early in the match. Oh, that Ooh. was such a nice setup. I was talking to Jack earlier, which is Colin's doubles partner. They are probably the scrappiest duo I've ever seen. Yeah. Now we got 4-2. Now a little side out. Now we have a uh, 2-4-1 for Schick and Buckner. Ooh. Oh. That would have been a really nice shot. That, that would have been nice. It very well. Colin was moving for the Ernie, but it was looking a little low. To get an attack on that. Good leave. Yeah, by good, great Colin. leave. Yeah, you can see him. He's like stutter stepping in the middle yeah. of the court. I mean, that's all him and Jack do when they play doubles. Oh, totally. They say they like to keep it scrappy just to keep things interesting, yeah. which I love for the sport. Great oh. hands there from Zane Avertel. It will keep that point alive and get them the get them the point. Just a bit long. <laughs> just, just a tad. Good attack, though. I don't mind it right there. Yeah, it was, a gr it was the right idea. And that's Ooh. a great volley from Colin Schick. Now we got 4-4-2. Four, four, Zane serving. shot from Andrew there. A little body bag. A nice little body bag right yeah, there. Colin wasn't quick enough to get out of the way for that one. Yeah. Uh, nice deep yeah. shot by Brooke there. Yeah. Zay wasn't quite able to get that one back. Yeah. And just side out yeah. for Brooke. like court. Good backhand drive though from Brooke. Great Good hands. hands battle, yeah. Zane is very has very quick hands. Oh, totally. Oh, good leave by Colin there. Great leave right there. Oh, when Chick tries to come in, he's pretty tall, pretty intimidating. You got to go for more than you feel like you actually have to. Oh, Ooh, not quite. Good, hand, good hands there from Colin. Zane was going for the nice body bag again. When I first talked to Colin when he had his breakthrough in Daytona, he was starting med school. Oh, 
Oh, oh nice. Attempted Ernie. Nice Ernie attempt for Colin. But yeah, I was talking to him and, you know, I asked him a question. I said, do you think you would go full-time pickleball? And he just laughs at me. He was like, nah, probably not. Now he's now taking he's, a year off of school. All yeah, all in and pickleball. There we go. Oh, just out. Great attack from the, I guess, gap year med school student. <laughs> that, that'll be an interesting one going back after you're a pickle. Yeah, seriously. Ooh. Oh, nice shot from Nice Cliffair. shot. Great point, though, for Andrea in the back, mm -hmm. getting a couple of those resets to work her way into the kitchen. Good attack by Colin. Serve. Nice little deep serve right there from Colin. Looked a little off pace to me. Yeah. Kind of threw Zane off right there. Nice I'm thinking a timeout might be called kind of soon. Well, it is game point. <laughs> is, guess not. So <laughs> this is the last chance I got. Last chance. attack by Colin to close out game Great one. Great poach right there. Imagine water that is pure and inexhaustible, recycled and accessible everywhere in the world. Imagine. Imagine the world of tomorrow, sustainable and desirable. Play hard for fun, to win, to live. Whatever your play, there's Penetrax Joint and Muscle Cream to let you play on. Deep penetrating relief without greasiness, irritation, or unpleasant odor. Inspired by nature and 100% guaranteed. Try Penetrax and play on. Welcome back to the Pickleball Central Indoor USA Championships powered by Lifetime. I'm Liv Gorski and I'm here with... Blaine Hovener. And we will be your commentators for today. So, Colin and Brooke took game one. Yes. And what do you think is going to happen in game two? I mean, Colin and Brooke are playing solid right now. Really liking how offensive Colin is right now. Really, really going for Ernie's and just trying to keep that scrappy moving moving all around the kitchen line like he does and doubles with Jack Sock. Keeps that up. I see them playing pretty well and keep sailing. Oh, just out. Good forehand drive though from Colin, just a tad deep. Yeah, everyone needs a little warm up game and I think that's what Zane and Andrea needed but their defense is impeccable. Oh, Ooh, nice little, shot from Colin there. They couldn't quite keep there. up. Colin did a great job holding that. I think everyone thought he was going to go middle. Even Zane. <laughs> Good lead by Zane there. Great lead by Zane. Andrea, lawyer by day, pickleballer. That is impressive. Night. Wow. 
Whoa. Oh, oh, wow. A little behind the back from Zane the back. there. It's a and great Colin shot from Zane. Puts it long for Zane. What a great point. Disguise shot by Colin there. A little inside out. A little inside out forehand, forehand right there. A little disguise. Sneaky. Le learning from his doubles partner, Jack Sock. <laughs> oh. Zane was sitting on that forehand. but just out by Colin there. Uh, okay. Ooh, Ooh, nice drop from Colin there. Able Great to get up to the kitchen, but Andrea couldn't quite get it back over. said that the ball didn't bounce quite yet. But ref called the foot fall on her. Called. Oh, missed return from Zane there. Missed return right there. I love seeing all the people wearing goggles more often. I mean, the balls are flying faster. Oh, Ooh, great forehand from Colin. Oh, yeah, indoors especially, the ball's traveling pretty fast. Yeah. I feel like eye protection is getting more and more important these days, especially with how fast the ball is moving and how good the players are getting. Seriously. Oh. Whoop. Oh. Dang. And a clean Ernie from Colin Schick right there. It's a nice save from Cur Zane, but he came all the way around the court and couldn't had, get back. We had a double right side right there. Oh. That's a good drop from Brooke right there. Caught Zane a little off guard. By Zane, Ernie, by Zane. and great coverage by Andrea. Oh, Covered the whole court for about five <laughs> seconds. Exactly. Great Ernie by there by Zane earlier too. Oh. That's just some clean dinking from the lawyer right there. Footfall on Colin Schick. It looked like he was didn't reestablish. Sounds like the ref is telling him that that was it the case. He didn't reestablish himself. Very, very sure on her call there. A very confident call by the ref.
Oh, oh. painted the line on that one. I was good, good attack though by Zane and Andrea, but got a little lucky calling up the lob over them, painted the line. Good hands right there from Zane. And great Good hands all Andrew. around. Great hands all around. That was a great lead from the former UCLA Bruin. Call, Andrea called it out. Ooh, what do you think? That was a little close. It's a little close. Brooke, she was questioning the call before, but she got a little vengeance right there. Sticking a little volley to Zane. And a missed forehand drive from Colin Schick. I like the attempt though. shot to finish it off by Colin Schick. Uh, he opened up the middle of the court and just put it away very nicely. I like that the Volkov balls you're able to see indoors because of the color. I was playing with the Dura yesterday and it was just so hard to see. Yep, that was out. That was out. No, 100%. The new color on the Vulcan balls is amazing. Yeah. Especially inside. It is not, you don't have sunlight in here, so it makes it a lot easier to see. Yeah. Ooh. Wow, that's a good third wheels from time Zane. Colin has able to get that on Zane. Yeah. At that time, he was, he was going for that James Ignatowicz ESPN Sports Center Behind highlight. the back ATP, but couldn't He wanted one himself. <laughs> Just long. Just deep. And we are now at 772. Oh, good lead by Colin there. Just a bit long from team. Don't mind the idea, though. I like the attack. Agreed. Told you. Yeah. They just needed a warm up game. Exactly. You're right. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. A little stretch from Zane. Didn't quite get there. leave from Andrea Coop right there. Yeah, Colin keeps sailing the ball a little long. I do like the attack though from Colin. He's definitely going for it right now, which has been paying off for the most part. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Another missed stretch from Zane. Looked like he put a little bit more juice on that serve. I, I like that idea. Get a shorter fifth. Andrea backhand. tried to disguise it, but Colin yeah. Redder. Yeah. Just long. Miss return from Zane Avertil.
a short serve. Here's Zane and Andrea. I don't believe they've called a timeout yet this entire no. match. No timeouts have been called yet. So well, Andrew tried to attack there, kept it too high. And Colin put it away. Great patience, though. Yeah. I think Andrew thought one of the balls on the sideline earlier in the point was going to go wide, but I think Colin obviously was able to reach Colin over to reach and in. put away. Oh. Ooh. Now we're at 7 10 1. Still no timeouts, but they do have the serve. Oh, nice down the middle from Colin there. Second serve. Let's see if they can get some points. What do you think the strategy is for calling no timeouts? Honestly, no idea. <laughs> I think they're just trying to grind through it, and you know, timeouts kind of throws everything off. Throws you out. On the flip side, though, I always feel like it also throws the opponents, especially when they're in a rhythm, makes them sit a little, not have to keep playing when they're grooving. Agreed. The players are warm; might as well stay warm. Exactly. Another. Especially in Minnesota. Exactly. A little brisk out there. My phone's telling me 33 degrees right now outside. Jeez. situation as before, but Colin couldn't exactly. quite put it away. Zane was like, nope, I got this. Nope. Great patience, though, from both of the ladies in the forehand cross dinks. Great hands battle nice. there. Great reset by Andrea Coop to keep them in that point. Yeah. Instead of going into another dink battle, she see she this what happens with this if I hit it at Colin. So I change up the strategy. Change of pace. Oh oh. Little let court overhead. Zane's joking, trying to call that out. Shot by Colin Good there. Good attack by Colin up the line. Do you think Zane's overreaching sometimes in that middle? Um, yes and no, because I feel like it's important for the person on the left side oh, oh. to kind of you know, take control of the point, but Andrea's more than capable of holding herself. So. I would definitely agree. Is it. back and Just deep. match goes to Colin Schick and Brooke Buckner.
Roche Posay sunscreen blocks up to 98% of UVB rays and helps prevent visible sun damage. The only sunscreen with Cellox Shield UVA UVB protection plus antioxidants. La Roche Posay, the official sunscreen of the Professional Pickleball Association. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the Carvana PPA Tour. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the Carvana PPA Tour. For many of us, we just charge ahead because planning for your future takes time. And right now, thinking about your financial future takes on new meaning. At Baird, our financial advisors have guided individuals and families to achieve their goals through every crisis evolution and groundbreaking idea for over 100 years. That's the difference between thinking you're ready for what lies ahead and knowing you've planned for it. Now that's different. Discover the Baird difference. We made our own tequila, so we'd always have a reason to get together, so you'd always have a reason to get together. Grab a glass, amigo. Our casa is your casa. Imagine that becoming energy producers would be as easy as biting into an apple. Imagine water that is pure and inexhaustible, recycled and accessible everywhere in the world. Imagine, imagine the world of tomorrow, sustainable and desirable. Eolia. life.
Ever notice how seniors and health insurance commercials all look the same? Because all of these companies see us the same, but not Humana. They see me. Humana. Big it up, big it up. Yes. Welcome back to Pickleball Central Indoor USA Championships, powered by Lifetime. I'm Liv Borski, and I'm here with... Blaine Hovenier. All right, so who we got? All right, on the far side of the court, we've got Hayden Patrick Quinn and Leah Jansen. And then on the near side of the court, we've got Liz Truluck and Kwong Duong. And that's a big forehand from Kwong. Right yeah, as I was saying to you earlier, I'm really excited to see how Leia and Hayden do together because Liz and Kwong have played together for a lot of tournaments. Good attack there from Hayden. Oh, this will be an interesting team over on the other side. Yeah. I don't believe they've played doubles together. No. Good, good hands. lead by Liz. Good hands and good lead from Liz right there. Usually Hayden plays with Maggie, but she is not at this tournament. Oh, nice little by Leia. Nice little backhand roll from Kwong Duong. Good, wow. good backhand attack from Hayden right there. Yeah, and Liz is just sticking it and ripping it. Her backhand yeah. is strong. Oh, she's swinging it right now. Just nice. deep right there. Nice attack from Liz there, attacking the baseline. I love like I was it. saying before, sticking it and ripping it. Kwong Duong will finish that out on net. That. that was a good serve there from Liz. It was yeah. nice and high, loopy, but landed what it looked like right on the baseline. Forced Hayden and Leia to stay back. Body bag from, from Hayden. Hayden there. A little cheer from Leia. Yeah. <laughs> Supporting her partner. Oh. oh, I like the idea of the law, but just yeah. Hayden's what? too quick to get back there to be able to too quick, and have I have a good forehand. I don't think the disguise was as effective as she was hoping. Yes. Oh, oh. got past both Kwong and Liz. Later Great forehand from court. Hayden, painting the far sideline. Oop. Oop. 
little trouble in winding the stack right there. Just couldn't quite get to the ball. Good leave. Great the leave right there. For a second, I thought I was going to curl on in. So did I. And, uh, <laughs> completely with strike that. Strike one for Hayden Patrick. <laughs> Doubt we'll see him get three strikes today. <laughs> but very surprised. You don't <laughs> see that happen too much. down the middle. Leia, Leia. Read, read that attack like a book. Okay, Dave. <laughs> oh. Almost. Good hands there from Hayden. Just out. Just wide. What do you think Kaden and Leia's strategy is? Oh, that right in. there. Just get as many leg cords as possible. Oh, yeah, right. No, I, I think their strategy is definitely going to be try to get in the kitchen and be more offensive up there where the, the firepower from Kwong Duong is he can take over from honestly any part of the court, especially with his singles prowess as well. What about Liz and Kwong? No, I think their strategy is going to be a lot more on the offensive. Like, as we saw starting off, Liz was just ripping backhands to begin with. And then Kwong, as we all know, loves to rip the ball. He's not going to want to be staying in too long of those dink rallies, especially on the cross with Hayden. And I wonder what uh, Kwong Duong's dad's coaching them up right now. I know they're coming up with a good strategy. wonder if it'll be enough to uh, get a few points against Hayden and Leia right here. Yeah, I think they just need to focus on unwinding their stack and you yeah. know, being able to set themselves up. No, 100%. It's super difficult when you're trying to unwind the stack every point and you're returning big, you, you can just get caught. And they See, did it perfectly there. Yeah, because once Kwong got there, you know. If Kwong can't get to there, most people can. He's one of the fastest people I've seen. Yeah, but Hayden is pretty fast too. That is true. Ooh. Oh, just out. Good disguise, though, from Leia. Who do you think wins in a race, Hayden or Kwong? Mm, good question. Honestly, Kwong. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a heavy forehand from Kwong to set up Brooke. Or true Liz. Liz's backhand. <laughs> They just needed to reset yeah. the ball there. I mean, yeah. just attack after attack yeah. on that one. I think right there is what Hayden and Leia's strategy is going to want to be, is keep them back. Just yeah. Control everything from the kitchen. Just wide right there. Still on that offensive kind of run and just hit it too long. You don't see that too often. Liz just ran out for an inside-out backhand instead of most people are going to be running for inside-out forehands in the return. Yeah, the fact she's taking more backhands than Kwong's forehand. Oh. 
Oh, and she was sitting there. She was. She, she had it. She had it. I think it, it, Hayden well, got a little lucky right there. Yeah, I think what's interesting is Liz and Kwong kind of equally share the court. Yeah. Oh, nice Great shot for shot. Hayden. Whereas Hayden and Leia, you know, kind of Leia lets Hayden take those balls. No, and a timeout is called by Kwong and Liz. Tens of thousands of customers wrote about Carvana being smooth in their five-star reviews, including Terry. To be honest, I thought it was almost too smooth, but Carvana was super transparent from beginning to end. Car details, financing, every step, and there were no surprises. Well, my monthly payment did come out lower than expected. Then I got to pick up my Mustang at the vending machine, and it was so fun and exciting, I did a little dance. <laughs> Trust me, financing my car with Carvana was super smooth. Finance your next car with Carvana today. Well, welcome back to the Pickleball Central Indoor USA Championships, powered by Lifetime. I'm Liv Gorski, and I'm here with... Blaine Hovenier. And we are back. So, timeout called by Kwong and Liz. See if they can, you know, get themselves together, get the ball back, and get some points. Pickleball Central paddle of the tournament is the Versix paddle. Have you played with one yet? I have not, but I need to try it out. I've heard it's a great paddle for many people. You know who plays with Versix? I do not. Enlighten me. Jeannie. Jeannie Bouchard. I mean, that's a great player right there. If she's using it, i got to try it. serve. As we were saying, the Versix paddle is the sweet spot between price and performance. Everyone at home, you got to go check it out. <laughs> Liz looked a little embarrassed there. Oh, nice put away by Hayden. Good I don't know about that take from Kwong right there. Yeah. I think kind of just set Hayden up to just swing on the next forehand. Yeah. I mean, he was planted. He just yeah. swung the paddle. Oh. oh, that is game one. For Hayden and Leia. Pioneered by revolutionary technology. Backed by relentless research. We bring you an unmatched quality of product. Made right here in the USA. Each performance paddle is engineered to perfection and built to last. Because when it comes to the sport we all love, quality and performance matter. Welcome back to the Pickleball Central Indoor USA Championships, powered by Lifetime. I'm Liv Borski, and I'm here with uh, Blaine Hovenier. And if you guys notice, there's a cute little QR code on the top right. And if you buy a paddle, you get, was it three to four, two to three? I think it was two to four they were saying. Two to four performance balls with your purchase. You might get lucky and get some more. You never know. Make sure to scan that QR code, guys. And we're back. Game two. And first forehand drive in the net from Kwong Duong. So if you're Kwong and Liz after losing the first game, what are you guys telling yourselves coming on game two? Probably reset more balls. I mean, they've just been, you know, swinging it and either hitting it long or swinging it where it comes high for Hayden and Leia to put away. Yeah. 
See? See. No, I agree. I think they're, they're living by all, all firepower all the time, which yeah. it's live and die by the sword. Is that when it's working? Because once you get to that pro level, maybe it'll, it'll work, you know, when you're playing other people but it's hard because you know these players are so controlled and are able to just know, like that take over the court Hayden's able to turn offense defense in one shot yeah rally that was but wow. they reset the ball that time they, they did and to, it worked you know when it came to the overhead frenzy they're able to reset the ball get back up and get the point oh 100 percent i think we just saw the point of the match at least so far oh and then <laughs> just i long. guess the adrenaline kicked in for liz a little too much and served one a little long get a little excited oh Nice backup from Liz there. Kwong little, just missed it. Little miss right there, but Liz is right there to back him up. Oh, oh. just long. And the net court didn't favor them this time. Yeah, but they could have gotten in trouble because Liz that was all the true. way on Kwong's side. He left the whole court open. leaving so it's just me guys sorry in advance all right hopefully Kwong and Liz can get some points on this one but so far Jansen and Patrick would have been a great matchup just long for Kwong there Just wide. Right idea, though. Right down the middle for Jansen. Kind of dinked it wide to leave it open. Put away for Hayden there. A little shake and bake for himself. Nice attack for Kwong there. Kwong's dad on the left. And to my left, I have Nitro, Kwong's little brother. Nice little family support system there. All right, and they're getting some points.
feeling a timeout if Kuang and Liz get another point after this. Oh, and I was wrong. wasn't quite high enough. Leia was able to get to it. Ernie attempt just long. is starting to take more of the court this time, which I think is beneficial because he has that reach and he has that wingspan to be able to attack those balls. Missing for Leia there, or er, drop. shot from Liz there. I feel like Kwong is, you know, he needs to be able to reset the balls a little lower because they bounce up high and then they're able for Hayden and Leia just to keep putting them away. Just out. Oh, 
out just out. That was a good timeout for Liz and Kwan to take earlier. They are able to creep up with some points. and Liz really put up a good fight, so. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. At Guaranteed Rate, we understand that life is about more than mortgages. Our aim is to empower you on your holistic journey to well-being and longevity by helping you achieve your financial and personal goals. Our new completely free rate app focuses on community, nutrition, and exercise, as well as offering a variety of financial tips and tools. The Rate app was built to support your mind, body, and spirit, helping to simplify your life and reduce your stress. Download the Rate app and start living your best life. Big it up, big it up. Yeah. Yeah. Roche-Posay Rose sunscreen blocks up to 98% of UVB rays and helps prevent visible sun damage. The only sunscreen with Cellox Shield UVA UVB protection plus antioxidants. La Roche-Posay, the official sunscreen of the Professional Pickleball Association. Every time someone tells you they vacation in the same place every year, it should really make you wonder, why? Travel like you mean it with IHG Hotels and Resorts. schedule. Reward yourself and girls whenever. Stay or go when you wanna. And more is on the way. So when you're ready to go, go with heart. Go with Southwest. Follow your vibe. Busy. Flavor for every vibe.
Every time someone tells you they vacation in the same place every year, it should really make you wonder, why? Travel like you mean it with IHG Hotels and Resorts. For muscle cramps and spasms, what's your move? The Hercules? The elephant? The pogo? Make the move to TheraWorks. It absorbs quickly for relief of muscle cramps and spasms. A safe, gentle, non-opioid formula you can use every day to keep moving without the mess or strong odor. For fast relief of muscle cramps and spasms, TheraWorks works. Try TheraWorks and get back at it. Great things happen when good friends get together. So grab a glass, amigo. Our tequila is your tequila. Our casa is your casa. To make it to the game, it takes dedication and training. To stay in the game, it takes grit and stamina. To win the game, it takes strategy and skill. You keep focus on your approach, drop, and champion shots, and we'll help you stay focused on your strength, flexibility, speed, and downtime. Having a sports medicine partner in your court is key to helping you make it to the game, stay in the game, and win the game. Select Medical is proud to be the exclusive provider of physical therapy of the PPA Tour. Indoor USA Championships, powered by Lifetime. I have a special guest with me, Miss Leia Jansen, who just won that match. Leia, that was a great match. Oh, thank you. How's it going, Liv? Great. So we got Lacey Schneeman and Travis Rettmeyer versus Alex Walker and Steve Deacon. What do you think about this partnership? Well, I haven't seen much of Alex play. I think 
Lacey and Travis are definitely going to bring the firepower, try and get their hands involved. And Deacon is much more of a old school, patient, wait for the right opportunity. Um, I imagine that's what he's really going to advise his mix partner to do as well. So it's going to kind of be the tale of two different games, I would think. Agreed. Steve has been double dipping in regular main draw and senior pro draw. That's right. Yeah. He's now a new senior. Yeah. I still always say I would love to see Matt Wright and Steve Deacon play when they were in their 30s in today's game, and I would love to see just how great they would be. They're both obviously amazing players now, but in their higher 40s, you just have to imagine when they were much more physical and mobile, they would have been a very big force to be reckoned with. Agreed. When do you think Matt would go to the senior pro? Like, right? I don't think Matt ever will. Ever? I don't think he will. Don't quote that. Don't quote me. But <laughs> just knowing Matt, I don't think he will. Yeah. He'll be coaching Lucy. <laughs> Is this Travis and Lacey's first round match? Let me check. I would imagine from the seating. Yeah. Round of 32. Okay, so, so yes. that's also going to play in a little bit. Travis and Lacey have been waiting for a little, and Steve and Alex have a W underneath their belt. Sometimes that's more helpful when you go in rather than just starting out cold, as we saw a lot in Mesa. Yeah, which is why Anna played singles, so she wouldn't start out cold. Which was smart. Yeah, yeah very smart. Very smart. Get your drives, your serves, your returns all acclimated. Yeah. I, I honestly don't think she was expecting to go that far. She, she played just, well. Yeah, she, she played, played really great. well. Anna's always been a good singles player, and I think that's what people forget. When she first came onto the scene, she was a top singles player. Just uh, back in June, she beat Mary Brasha at San Clemente and got to the semifinals. So I really do feel like she's an underrated singles player, and I know most girls, when they see her in the draw, don't take her lightly. Yes. I mean, she, she beat Judith in Mesa, and Judith just won APP. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, she's she's definitely a force to be reckoned with. And she goes out there and just plays aggressive and swings away. So anytime you're playing a player with nothing to lose, it's a scary thing. Yes. What do you think their strategy, like Lacey and Travis, what do you think their strategy is going to be? So I played with Travis, and he is a physical specimen, and he relies on his hands and just kind of – people attacking him and he likes to actually have his female partner initiate which is one of the more fun things about playing with Travis and there you have it he loves the drive I don't think Schneeman or Rettmeyer will ever drop tough guy to lob. Yeah. I know uh, Alex and Steve have played together before. Have Lacey and Travis? Yes. They played a few times last year, and they've played two at the beginning of this year. So oh, no nice. new partnerships. And I think that's what you're also going to see them implement a lot, the driving crash. Just out quick four points right there for Travis and Lacey. I think right there, since Steve's coming in, I would like to see Alex take that ball, but it's a little bit different in mix. Sometimes you're unsure of whether you want to take that middle ball or not. Oh. That's a nice aggressive attack for Lacey right there, but couldn't quite finish it. So Liv, what's your favorite event to watch? I love mixed. Interesting. I just love how, you know, for example, I Great heard job. that Anna's playing on the left of Colin. So of course, yes. I'm yes. excited to see how that goes. And I think it's really cool how different people play with each other. Well, that's a good attack. I actually really do like how Colin is one of the more flexible guys in showing some different looks. I often say that. Nobody is Ben, so if we're trying to play like Ben, everyone's playing for second. So to give different looks is very good for people not named Ben Johns. <laughs> I 
And what's your take on everyone wearing the glasses now? I, I mean, it's coming. I'm glad that everyone's doing it. I've thought about it, and but I'm like, I look too way too nerdy. So <laughs> once everybody else does, then I'm going to start doing it. Oh, just talking about Travis. Yeah, I can see what you're talking about with Travis being very aggressive at the kitchen line. Four and four. Still on a one. Okay. Good comeback. Wow. Whoa. What hands by Deacon. Yeah. That was a good attack by Lacey. Just too good by Steve. This long. It's a good play. I'm really impressed by Walker's uh, rolls. Yeah. Her roll from the kitchen line and her topspin roll from the baseline is very impressive. Yeah, and she's able to keep up in those hands battles as well. Oh, great defense there, though. Just couldn't quite make it over. That's a great run, though. Yeah. This long. I was really excited to see you and Hayden's partnership. Yeah, I love playing with Hayden. We met on the fives, and I got to know him very well. And I think he's uber talented. Ooh, unlucky net. I think that was a decent attack. Yeah. He's uber talented, and growing by the day. So yeah. I'm really excited and he's a great partner. Yeah. He's fun to work with. Very sweet. Yeah, his mom did a good job. Yeah. Which may not see seem like it on the court, but he's a really nice kid. <laughs> Steve Deacon at 50 years old, his hand speed is still better than most. Yeah, he's very it's impressive. Underrated. Yeah, that's Good tough. away for Travis there. I don't mind the swing from the transition zone. It's just a little bit ambitious against this team. Yeah. I think this is more of a team you want to grind down in Lacey and Travis where quick points they love. Yeah. You want to slow down the ball more. Jeez. Great just hand like speed. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I was saying when, you know, Kong and Liz were playing you, I mean, all they do is just stick it and rip it. They don't really slow it down. And y'all were able to take advantage of that. The game is speeding up, but they're, for those of you at home, slowing slowing the game down still is very effective. You have to have both. Good pickup. Oh, wow. Good reach in by Steve. Yeah, able to take over that point right there. Kind of neck and neck here. Let's see if they can create some distance. Yeah. Oh, just a good lead. Shot. Nice shot by Lacey. 
We got Team Canada over here with Steve and Alex. Oh, is she from Canada? Yep. Did not know that. That's Alex awesome. Alex and Angie, yeah. Good hands. Yeah, Travis is just really going to test out the girl consistently mm -hmm. because for the most part, he feels like he's going to win most of those battles. Yeah, but good, good on Alex for keeping up. Oh, right in. I mean, he's she's right there with him, though. Yeah, I think here, instead of going high at Lacey's backhand, once you get even, just slow it down, especially just against this team. Yeah. And half the time she was, like, in the transition zone when she was hitting those balls. I'm going to drive. Mm. Good reset, though. Just out. Lacey tried that earlier and it worked, but not this time. Few gimmies here. Now we're all tied up. 8 8. No timeout from Lacey and Travis. I was just about to say, when do you think that they would call a timeout? So I played with Travis a bit last year, and I know he's not a big timeout caller. I was the timeout caller, so. <laughs> I think it's going to be up to Lacey. Yeah. Timeouts are important, and they can be used, you know, either way, unless you're Jack Sock and you just <laughs> call a timeout after. I love Jack's timeouts. Those were funny. Oh, Ooh, that's what Steve wanted. But nonetheless, they tied it up. Yeah. just a little high and Lacey goes full send which works out great when the drive is great but that's the risk you take when you full send on the poach yeah oh wow nice ATP there one of the first think rallies between the ladies we've seen. Yeah. And Lace is very quick on her feet. Ooh, oh. he had it. Yeah, Steve wanted it. ATP after ATP, but couldn't quite get there. And we have our first time out. Oh, Good time out. Alex and Steve, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a great matchup. I mean, they're keeping up with each other, so. For sure. And so if you're Steve and Alex, what are you talking about right here? Or are you talking? It looks like they, they're not really talking. They're just taking a timeout break. <laughs> Trying to ice out their opponents. Um, honestly, if I was Alex, instead of, you know, with those hands battles with Travis, instead of just keep on giving it back to him, probably change it up and give it to Lacey more. I agree. For those of you at home, when you're playing mixed and you're in front of the male, it is important to, yes, you're going to have to counter and shut it down, but there's also times where you're just going to have to reset it. And it can be very annoying to the aggressive player. And it's kind of a blend of those both. Good D, though. Great rally there. Great game one. At Baird, we offer a different, more holistic approach to wealth management with your career, family, friends, and community.
Finding time for you and making sure your family's financial plans are on track can be a real challenge. At Baird, our financial advisors get it. We'll partner with you to create a unique financial plan and coordinate with your legal and tax advisors to bring it all together so you have more time for what matters most. Welcome back to the Pickleball Central Indoor USA Championships, powered by Lifetime. My name is Liv Gorski, and I am here with special guest Leia Jansen. So Lacey and Travis took game one. It was a very close one. Great hard fought battle by Alex and Steve. Um, what do you think Alex should be Alex and Steve should be doing this game? Well, I think you have to take some positives. They got down and then it was pretty neck and neck from there. So eleven eight, it can go either way. You just kind of have to throw that one away, make a few adjustments. I think just kind of elongating the points for them. They seem to come out on top of those more. Oh, that's oh. really good. Lacey's got some really slippery stuff with her forehand. Yes. Very disguised. Very quick. Yeah, Steve, that would have been sick if Steve made the behind the back. Oh, just out. She's on it, though. And at this point, you kind of know what's coming with Travis. He's going to come right at you, so you just got to be ready for it. There it is again. Yeah. Just slow. And Steve is the king of the backhand slice returns, and so is Pat. What do you yes. think about those? I mean, they're vintage. Like, they they both have great slice returns. It's a lot easier in doubles than singles. We're kind of seeing a lot of them go away now, but it's still a great play, especially on this court, because the ball's not bouncing up too much. Yeah. Nice aggression by Travis. Yeah, Alex popped it up for him to put away. Once again, see hitting that in the transition zone just too high. It's hard to attack in the transition zone nowadays. Yeah, especially in the pro level. Oh, Alex is right there. Take full advantage of that pop up. Great take by Steve. down the middle. Travis is staying opening it up for Steve to move left and left that open for Lacey. Oh, that was pretty. Ooh, nice, Steve. Could definitely, so silky smooth. Yeah, I could definitely say from you know these two games itself that Steve and Alex are an underrated team. For sure. You can never count Steve Deacon out. Yeah. He's yeah. one of the smartest players, one of the most textbook disciplined players. Oh, what oh. a shot. Honestly, I think Steve's just happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Just missed on the return. It looked a little wide from here. Oh, it's exactly what Travis wanted. Steve in the transition zone is so good. Like, watching him, I know he's going to make every single ball there. Oh, what D, though. That 
was a great point. He does not miss that often. Yeah, he looked very surprised. I mean, that went very wide. <laughs> Great run. Yeah. They got five after being down three. So again, kind of like game one. Yeah. Just game of runs. Neck and neck once again. Just back. Great serve. You know, I don't. Literally no clue. Yeah. We'll have to ask him. I don't I, I don't even think of that, but yeah. he often is called that. Yeah. I hear Dave say it, so I'm like, I don't know why. Yeah. It's just too much Travis right there. Great yeah. drive and crash to set the tone. Yeah, once again, Alex and Travis going back and forth. Shot. Oh, Ooh. great lob from Travis just out by Steve. Very tricky. Oh, great drive. Set Alex up right there. A one point lead. This has kind of been neck and neck this whole time. Yeah. Right? Lacey was sitting on it. it. Just once it gets down to your hip level, it's really tough to counter from there. What's your best advice for when that something like that happens? So I've actually just started working on this because I am susceptible to swinging on stuff I shouldn't be. I've just been doing a lot of wow, oh. great hands by Steve and Alex there. Uh, I've just been trying to do some hands battles, and then anytime the ball gets low, I'm just trying to train my brain to reset it. Because basically, once you're swinging low, you're you're not going to win that point. Yeah, it's either in the net or way long. Yeah. That was a little bit of a mistake on the drive. They're coming in on a stack. I would have driven that at Lacey. Yeah. Was, oh. Oh, they both went for that. He almost got there. Yeah, he did. I think he just saw Lacey coming and got a little scared. Oh, oh, wow, sneaky. <laughs> Those slice resets that Lacey has are so good. Oh, a little high from Alex. It's a 
first time she went to a slice drop and kind of left it up a little bit. Yeah. Nice drive. That's so good from Steve to defend behind and then counter through the middle. Yeah, Lacey almost got away with it too. Wow, good ATP defense. Oh. I think Alex's mouth I was on that. She definitely was. Yeah. Almost two on it, too big a swing. Yeah. But nonetheless, they got up two. Oh, what a leap from Travis. That was such a good hands go. Good duck. Yeah. Oh. She had it. She, she hit him with a little Italian gesture there. <laughs> wow, good cover through the middle by Lacey there. And Alex has done really well this whole time. She knows the drive's coming at her, which can be intimidating, but she's handling Travis very well right now. Agreed. And now it's all tied up. Oh, Ooh, yep. Even if Travis did leave it, he put it away. And, and a good timeout high. here. Yeah. Not yet, buddy. Welcome back to the Pickleball Central Indoor USA Championships, powered by Lifetime. I'm Liv Borski, and I'm here with Leia Jansen. <laughs> and if you notice, you have a cute little QR code on the top right, and if you scan that, you get and buy a Versix paddle, you get two to four free Vulcan balls that come with it. There you go. Folks at home, go get your Yola paddles. Oh. Timeout didn't affect Travis and Lacey that much. The driving crash just kind of has taken over once this side out came at 7 5. I yeah. think that's four points on the driving crash. Oh, oh. A little tag there. He tried to leave it. Wasn't quick enough. All right, one match point saved. shot. Good cover in the middle and then Steve cleans it up. Oh wow. Oh. What a drive. That was so low off of a really good return by Travis. <laughs> you could hear Steve yelling at Alex, leave it. That is pickleball. I was victim to it yesterday, being up 9-1. <laughs> it just disappears in a flash. It's such a momentum game. Oh! oh. What a risky attack. 
feet had, Steve was on it. Yeah, Lacey was right there. That was the first stink rally I've seen in a while. I know, right? <laughs> it's kind of been blast away. Yeah. Way to move the ball around. And now look at this. Match point to game point. Yeah. Oh. oh. And we're going to have a game three, folks. Wow, what a good matchup this is. This is exciting. What a get by Steve. Jansen. All right, game number three, folks. Let's see how this goes. Let's see how Travis and Lacey rebound. Yeah. Ooh. Seems like Travis is just going to come harder. Yeah, swinging for the hills. behind Travis looked like he got the line boom yeah. nice shot Woo! great defense turned into offense nice backhand swing on that one that was great that's what I mean how you can frustrate the aggressive guy she reset so then he pulled one probably he shouldn't have yeah. I mean, Travis, you know, attacking on her hasn't really scared her at all. Oh, nice shot. Wow, tricky. Lacey's really got some slippery stuff over there. Yeah. They got two. And it should be noted what I kind of found the tougher side, which is meaning facing towards the crowd, less of a backdrop, is the side that both teams have won on. Wow, tricky, Steve. He does not speed up off bounds very much, but that was very calculated. there, but nonetheless a pretty high third. Lacey takes care of it. Wow. Oh, nice put away for Travis there. 
Lacey's on the initial flip and Travis cleans up. I like Steve's off-pace attacks. He's yeah. not just trying to hit through it. He knows the ball's bouncing low. Oh. oh. Good hands battle there. Good hands by Travis. I like the aggression. a really good volley. She means nice business. and low. Yeah, her face looks pretty determined when she walked back. Not that I'm one to talk. I like to see it. I feel like at least I'm not the only one. Oh, nice put away for Travis there. I would rather see Steve take that yeah. attack down the line. Travis has one of the best backhand punches and hand speed in the game. I saw when Steve, Travis got that ball back from Steve, Travis already knew where Steve was going and he was already transitioning to the left side of the court. Good serve. Oh. I think that might have bounced in the net had she let it. She's just too quick. Yeah. I really like that region by Alex because she really kind of got on one leg, what we like to call a flamingo, which allowed her to get it down more instead of swinging up. See ya. Oh, yeah, she came up too quick. They've kind of been stuck on two here for a second. Play by Steve. A little bit too much risk there on the regen. Oh. A few unforced gives them a 4 1 lead. Steve's backhand drop is beautiful. Yeah. I need it. <laughs> wow. What a put away. <laughs> You're like, okay, I'm good. producers would be as easy as biting into an apple. Imagine water that is pure and inexhaustible, recycled and accessible everywhere in the world. Imagine, imagine the world of tomorrow, sustainable and desirable. Veolia. Welcome back to Central Indoor USA Championships, powered by Lifetime. My name is Liv Gorski, and I'm here with Leah Jansen. We got a good one, Liv. Yeah, we do. Six-one lead at the switch. A 
<laughs> They'll take that one. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty neck and neck this whole time, but let's see if Lacey and Travis can come back. They are a team that can really reel off points quick. Yeah. Oh. And Travis started with the drop and some soft stuff there. Yeah, He's trying to switch it up. Oh. Wow. Alex kind of went full send body bag on that one yeah. too. That's when you know someone's feeling it. Yeah, seriously. We sent some frustration from Lacey and Travis there, but. For sure. Two stops. Great drive. Double drive. All right. Steve popped it up for Travis to put it away. Six, one, two. Like you were saying, his backhand. there. Oh. It's a big side out right there. Yeah. They could have really expanded the lead and now it's back on serve. Oh, Great hands. There's two, Travis. and I really like that timeout. Yeah. A few side outs, and now they're starting to run. So let's just stop the bleeding before it gets too bad. Trying to keep the lead that they have. Hopefully icing Travis and Lacey out. Yeah, I think it's just been a few quick trigger pulls, a few unforced errors on uh, Lacey and Travis's side, and they are more than capable of cleaning it up. So I really like this time out here, just more of a reset to stop the momentum. Yes, very smart by them. Here comes Matt Mayfield. What a guy. He's a legend. Legend of the PPA. He actually, we did office superlatives. He won the one with the most PPA spirit. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Matt had PPA spirit before he even started working for the PPA. Uh -huh. He was not really sure what his affiliation was, but he was hardcore PPA until he finally got hired. He ran the YMCA in Kansas and the pickleball program, and that's how he, you know, met all the Kansas folks like Jay, who else, Pat, you know, and Matt and Lucy, and just followed them to the PPA, and now he's here. Gotta love it. Everyone has a strong love of pickleball, and we need them all. Matt Mayfield is definitely one of the best around. Definitely. <laughs> and we're back. Let's see if Travis and Lacey can stay on fire after the timeout call by Alex and Steve. left it a little bit high. If Lacey can attack out of the air, it's pretty tough. She has so much wrist action. And you never know what she's going to do with the ball. Exactly. It's so hard to read, and she can go every direction. Backhand punch. Just like that. I think they're just being a little bit too aggressive, and I understand why, because, you know, they left a few up. But what was working was just kind of calculated. Too oh, yeah. good. Steve left a little window open for Lacey, and she she took it. And just like that, we went from 6-1 to 6-6. Like I said, this team can get hot and reel off points. Pickleball, what an unpredictable sport. You never know. They needed that one.
And now they take the lead. 7-6. short but they really stop the bleeding and actually have a lead right now so now the pressure is on Alex and Steve yeah oh great hands it's a great shot oh great drop She felt that frustration. What a point. That was crazy. Lacey and Travis almost collided on the court after that law, but Lacey kept it alive. You get the feeling they need to score here. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. Oh. oh my gosh. See ya. Oh, Steve was just all over that ball, but Travis and Lacey just put it away. That was crazy. Boom. That's pretty tough. Both of those points, they had looks. Oh. oh. What a get. I did, yeah, that was yeah. right on the line. Good sportsmanship there. Wow, what a get by Lacey. That's the risk you take, and Lacey doesn't quite slide enough. And yeah. it was a really disguised attack, yeah. so it's tough for her to. Great lob. Yeah, she couldn't quite get to it. Look at Travis. Just I know. Being showing all the tools. It's not even that high either, I mean. All right, they've been stuck on six for about like three serves. Oh, oh there we go. Announcer's change. <laughs> all knotted up at seven. Great sneak in by Steve at the last second. Yeah. That ball was pretty low. Yeah. He was able to attack it pretty well. Now they have the lead again. Oh. But they're up one after being up 6 1 and getting down 7 6. Let's see what Lacey and Travis can do here. What a get. Oh, that was such a great drive by Travis for her to get it back was really good. Yeah. Eight, eight. Wow, great hands. Oh, oh my goodness. I mean, if this match says anything, it just kind of proves that Alex Walker can really hold herself. For sure. She's she's doing great. So many up and comers coming into the sport now. It's great to see. Oh. 
good timeout. a stereotypical senior, I just play one in cheesy health insurance commercials. In real life, I have Humana because they see me, listen to what I need. It's refreshing. Humana. All right. It's Leia Jansen here with Liv Borski, and we have quite the match coming down to the wire right here. Yeah. You know, this... All three games, both teams have been neck and neck, and Alex and Steve had a huge lead. Lacey and Travis caught up, and now it's 9 8. Oh! oh. And a much needed side out. in the transition zone. She was doing great. 9-9. Nine, nine. Travis does not miss that often. gets a reach in. She's tough to defend. Yeah. All those things are very low. And they were well placed. Oh, just out. Just missed it. Jeez. She had a great look. Announcer's curse. Oh, oh yeah. Just missed it. Now we have a match point and still no timeout. Dang. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Wow. And I would call that an upset. Yes, I would too. I mean, 21 seed defeats 9 seed. That is a big time upset for sure, right there. Thanks for tuning in with us, guys. And guess. <laughs> Bring it on. Pack all the things. Fly on your schedule. Reward yourself and the girls whenever. Stay or go when you wanna. And more is on the way. So when you're ready to go, go with heart. Go with Southwest.
I better myself. My name is Lee Waters, and I'm a professional pickleball player. My daughter, Anna Lee, is my doubles partner, and her 16th birthday is coming up. Be great to get her a car, and Carvana has helped us make that dream come true. They have thousands of options, and I'm a mom, so of course I want Anna Lee to have something safe. Anna Lee has absolutely no idea about this car, so I told her we're going to Carvana's vending machine for a photo shoot. Drum roll. I think this belongs to you. Oh my gosh, what? Happy Sweet 16, Annalie. Experience it for yourself at Carvana.com. The Roche-Posay sunscreen blocks up to 98% of UVB rays and helps prevent visible sun damage. The only sunscreen with Cellox Shield UVA UVB protection plus antioxidants. La Roche-Posay, the official sunscreen of the Professional Pickleball Association. Welcome back, pickleball friends. Dave the Badger Weinbach in the booth with a special guest commentator, Danny Jensen from Arizona. Thanks for joining me in the booth, buddy. I'm excited, I'm excited. We got a special matchup here. We got the match that so many people wanted to see today. Catherine Parento and Jack Sock are taking on Pablo Therese and Maya Gora, who is also from Colombia. So they know each other way, way back when. Now she lives in Kansas City. Uh, has got some great players to train with there. Uh, this is going to be a really interesting matchup of, I think, contrasting styles. You've had a chance to actually play the pro mixed doubles uh, today. Have you had a chance to watch Jack and Catherine play today at all, Danny? I haven't watched Jack and Catherine play yet today, but I will say this is going to be a very interesting matchup, mainly because you're going to see the girls probably head up with a lefty-righty um, with Pablo Tejas. So it's going to be interesting to see kind of how each team plays around with it, you know, Jack having that uh, forehand that we all know a lot about. So yeah, you know, in, in in commentating some of Jack and Catherine's matches last week in Mesa, I noticed how Jack is getting a lot more comfortable playing. You know, 75, 80, 85 percent of the court. I think he's making better decisions on when to come and when not to come, and he's getting more and more comfortable with Catherine and. As you know, Catherine makes it so easy to play with her. She's so positive. She's such a supportive partner. I just, I just love watching her play. It doesn't matter to me if it's singles, mixed doubles, gender doubles. She's such a joy to watch. And, and, I, and I think maybe the most consistent women's pro player we've had in the history on the women's side. So that's going to be a really tough out today coming in as the three seed and uh, taking on the 18th seed. Yeah, no, and you know, the the interesting thing that I want to watch today is going to be, uh, you know, Pablo is going to get to stay in front of Jack Sock a lot of the time today. Yep. And so it's kind of interesting because Jack Sock may not have seen this too many times, right? He's new to pickleball. It's kind of like off, st it's going to feel like it's off stacked, right? Um, with the lefty righty. So And Carolina, uh, Mayorga Perry, nobody really knows much about here. I was talking to Pablo before the match, and I was asking him for a little background on her, and he said she's from Columbia originally. He thinks she's a very underrated player because people don't know of her, but she lives in, in the Overland Park, Kansas City area, I think. So she trains with Yana and, and Philip Locklear and you know so many great players now in that area uh, that she gets to train with. So they've already had a pretty good run today. They beat two quality teams, he was telling me. So this is not going to be a absolute walkover for Jack and Catherine. They are going to have to earn this. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know what? I'm actually excited. This is my first time that I'm actually going to get to watch uh, Pablo um, and Mayorga as a team as well. So, um, so something I want to really pay attention to because I may have to play them in the future. Yeah, well, uh, referee Anisha has given the players 
another three minute warning so we're going to take a quick break and when we come back we will be live danny jensen dave weinbach let's go Follow your vibe. Busy. Flavor for every vibe. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the Carvana PPA Tour. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Sketchers Pickleball, the official footwear of the Carvana PPA Tour. At Baird, we offer a different, more holistic approach to wealth management with your career, family, friends, and community. Finding time for you and making sure your family's financial plans are on track can be a real challenge. At Baird, our financial advisors get it. We'll partner with you to create a unique financial plan and coordinate with your legal and tax advisors to bring it all together so you have more time for what matters most. Welcome back, Pickleball friends. First serve right here. Really good defense there by Carolina. Kept that point alive. There was a middle ball there that Sock usually comes in and destroys that forehand. And Catherine stuck her nose in there with that backhand. <laughs> I think they're just going to get comfortable here for a few minutes. Figure out what's going on. Figure out the right strategy. Yeah, that's a ball that Catherine has to let Jack take all day long. You know, you got to play to your strengths in pickleball. And by far, Jack Sock's biggest strength is that forehand roll where he puts so much top spin on it, dips so much, Danny. Yeah. And that one dipped too much. <laughs> you know, blocking is going to be one of the most important things to watch from uh, Pablo. So Carolina. when you say blocking, what are you talking about? What specific skill? Like, honestly, it's it's punching a punch volley you know what I mean like punch volley back in deep into the court so that you're not just getting controlled at the kitchen or giving them free balls popping balls up great hands there by Carolina, who is originally from Colombia, I think the Bogota area. Pablo, you're really becoming a dangerous mixed doubles player. We're going to talk about that as this match progresses. You and know, that's the announcer's pa curse. Pablo, <laughs> Pablo and Jack do something very similar, where they both run around their forehands. We're going to see, you know, they're a fat faced up right now, but it's going to be very interesting to see who's rolling in, who's playing playing through the middle, going body throughout the match. We got the D&D &D boys in the booth. Danny and Dave having a great time here at this beautiful Lifetime Fitness at the National Indoor Championships. Brought to you by Pickleball Central. Little hesitation there by Sock. Wasn't sure if Parento was gonna go and take that ball off that net court. The thing I love about um, Parento, Danny, is she always seems to make the right decisions on balls. She knows when to attack. She knows when to stay patient and dink or reset. She always seems to have the right targets that she's going to to her opponents. You know, and the other thing is that she keeps it simple a lot of times, right? She's not overcomplicating the play. She's allowing her instincts to take over, and, you know, then you make a lot less errors. Look at that backhand through the middle. 
you were saying how both these gentlemen like to run around their backhand. Or run around their forehand. Or run around their backhand to hit a oh, forehand. to hit a forehand, yes. And the reason they can do that is they're so quick. They have such great footwork. You being an ex-semi-pro soccer player, I did my research on you. Oh, I didn't know that you'd do you, anything about I that. I see that you run around your um, backhand as well and try to drive your forehand. I, I'm more forehand for sure. <laughs> It's easier to do at the kitchen line. Just a miss hit there, trying to reset that ball. So Parento and Sock with an early 3-1 lead here. This is the best two out of three games to 11. I like how Jack comes over and takes that ball. And I think one of the things that these two players are doing a much better job of is when he comes over and when he doesn't. My feeling is anytime a ball floats like that high and Jack has time to come over, he should take that ball. Yeah, and there's that forehand that we've all been talking about, catching the back line. Yeah, great finish there by Pablo. Along with Danny Jensen, this is Dave the Badger Weinbach, proud to bring you this live action all afternoon long right here on the grandstand court. I thought Pablo could have done a lot more with that first high forehand that he got there, Danny. Yeah, you know, it's tough when Catherine's playing this solid and you have Jack kind of creeping through the middle. You got you, you really got to be selective with your play. That's a very rare unforced error off that parental forehand dink. After this point, Danny, let's update our uh, YouTube audience on the bracket today. Yeah, I can, I can get you with that. Yeah, so right now we're, you know, sitting right here in the, what is this, round of 16. Uh, Thomas Wilson and Vivian David already into the quarterfinals. We got... Uh, Colin Schick and Brooke Buckner um, up in the second game against Callie and Jay, but Callie and Jay took the first game. We got uh, Matt, Matt Wright and Lucy Kovalova um, playing Deckel and Tina. That's going to be a great game over on center court. And then, uh, you know, um, oh, yeah, Colin and Anna actually already on to the uh, quarters as well. Check out this score, Dave. Colin Johns and Anna Bright beat Rafa in Paris, 17-15 in the second game. I was watching uh, the conclusion of that game, and, and both teams had game points. And that backhand inside out volley is going to just sail wide, so that gets uh, Parento and Sock to 6-2 here in the early stages of game one. Yeah, really good setup there by Parento with that forehand dipping drive to the Pablo backhand, and he fluffs it up high, and an easy finish there by Sock. Sock, originally from Omaha, Nebraska, now resides in Charlotte, North Carolina, where he has a lot of great training partners. We'll talk about that later. You know, I'm going to take a look at this. It definitely looked pretty close, but... That's something that like Pablo's trying to push the ball over to Catherine. He's um, Jack's putting a lot of pressure on him, and obviously you see the bird. But wow! Yeah, great move there, and his feet were clean. Referee Anisha, you know her main job is to be watching the feet at the kitchen line. One of the best, most experienced refs we have. Anisha always is getting high-level pro matches on center court and stadium court, and there's a reason for that. She's fantastic. Oh, that's really impressive. I mean, Pablo, I thought, hit a great volley that stayed low. Let's watch the replay here. Yeah. 
that is just a flick of the wrist right there. That's, that's not easy to do. You can't teach that. Sock changing his mind at the last second and now chuckling at himself. So let's see if Carolina and Pablo can get on a little bit of run here and make this first game a little more competitive. Oh, terrific counter there by Mayorga Perry, anticipating that ball coming to her backhand and sitting on it and unleashing the two-handed cross court for the winner. Stocksrude and Rachel Warbacher, that match coming up real soon. So what an incredible day here on Mixed Pro Doubles Day. Oh, that is not going to end well for you. Somehow, somehow he has to keep it away from that forehand of, uh, of Jack. I'm not quite sure exactly the, the plan right there, but if you leave those dead balls, he's just too good for that. I think if you're Carolina and, and Pablo, you got two targets. Either you go cross court into Parento's body or outside of her right foot, or you go behind Sock to his backhand. There can't be anything in the middle. Yes. You know, if you can hit that right leg of Catherine, there's not going to be much that she can, you know, she can't really go outside of it. She doesn't create as many angles as if you go all the way outside of her body. We'll see, we'll see what they can do, though. That was very close to Sock actually hitting the ball, making contact on the other side. No, he's clear. He's clean. clean for Folks, sure. you must make contact with the ball on your own side of the net, and that was clean. He sure did. And I really like how Pablo is inserting himself more as this match has progressed. I think for them to be competitive in this match, Pablo has to play very aggressive like we just saw. It's not one of the targets. It's tough. It's tough. When you're going to the outside body, um, or, you know, like when you're pulling uh, Jack Sock all the way to his left, he then has, it opens up angles, and then you're asking Carolina to cover middle. And that's very difficult because Pablo's got to hold his line. Um, so. It's, it, if you let him run around, run around that ball, it's going to be very tough. And you just saw the shot that Sock has worked so much on in the last six months to take his game to the next level. Is that backhand slice cross-court dink. He was extremely inconsistent on that shot six, nine months ago. And I can tell he, along with Colin Schick, have worked very hard on that. And that, I think, is the difference maker of Jack Sock today versus where Jack Sock was six months ago in his game. And now there's no easy way to pick on him. That's a great point. And at the pro level, as you know very well, the, the difference between the players is just so small. So if you can work on one of these things and become very proficient at it and very consistent, it can up your game by multiple levels. And that's going to sail wide. So. Mayorga Perry and Telez trying to make a run here and make this first game competitive. That, that's difficult, you know. That's another one of those balls that just sits up though, right? So then well, 
Jack is to come over from wherever he is and hit his forehand, and he can do whatever he wants. And as I often say, too many options there. Yeah. And as we saw in the pro tennis circuit, Jack Sock was one of the greatest overheads in the history of tennis. And of course, that translates very well to his pickleball overhead. Match point here. Uh, first or game first point. First game point, my bad, not match yep. point. 10 5. And that's going to clip the tape and sail wide, but they will have a second serve here trying to capture game one in this best two out of three to 11. And that will take it in game one here. So these players will take a break, they'll switch sides, and we will be back with game two here at the Pickleball Central National. USA Indoor Tournaments along the Carvana PPA Tour. Along with Danny Jensen, this is Dave the Badger Weinbach bringing you this live action here on the grandstand court all afternoon long. It is Mixed Pro Doubles Day after an incredible singles day yesterday. Four hours I was here on this grandstand court for men's pro singles, women's pro singles. Incredible live action, Danny, all day long. And here we go, the start of game two. So they served while she was talking. If, she, if, if they served before she was talking, it would have just been a redo. But she, because she was in the course of talking, there's a side out. A quick shout out and thank you to Versex, the official paddle of the Pickleball Central National Indoor Championships. We are uh, using a brand new Vulcan ball here for every game. Yeah, balls, the speed of play is going to be a little bit quicker at the beginning of the games, as you're going to see. So this grandstand court, Danny, really filling up here on mixed pro doubles day. And we got the best seat in the house. We are at 0-0 in game two. I really thought Pablo would take a step to his right and rip a forehand there, but he chose to go with the backhand, surprisingly. So Dave, early on already one point here for Jack with his forehand again. What is what is Pablo and Caroline going to do? You can see Danny, I think they heard us. They're hitting now the two targets that we were talking about. So as you were saying earlier, they have to limit Sock's forehand touches. So I think they either got to go behind Sock, make him hit backhands, or get the ball to Parento on the right side of her body. And there, Carolina's mistake was that she fluffed a ball up too much down the middle. And if you let Sock get an, an attackable forehand like that, you are going to pay a steep price every time. Well, 
you know, we I had mentioned it earlier. When, when Sox running around that ball, now you're asking Carolina to actually cover that middle, and that's what you just saw there. And it's very difficult, especially in mixed doubles. It holds Pablo on the line. Yeah, great job there by Mayorga Perry stepping in and unleashing on that forehand. I thought they developed that point, Danny, really, really well. They caught them on the off stack. And Sox said, whose side is that? Danny, the PPA is um, executing this new serve rule. Can you talk about what they can and cannot do on the serve here at the pro level? Yeah, you're going to notice they're dropping the ball from below their waist. There can be no upward motion. I actually got called on it today, so I kind of am used to getting called on this rule a little bit. few unforced errors but it, so they have to release the ball below their waist yep and then you know from there you're kind of it's allowing it to be less of a, a weapon necessarily and I think that's what they're going for oh great hands there by Pablo with that counter punch so let's see if Pereno and Sock can get off this three here they really want to get this in two Danny and not go three with these guys they know with this large field, it's going to be a really long day. We will play all the way up into the championship final. And then, of course, that sets up championship Sunday. So it's going to be a long day for these players. They sock and print to really want to capture this match in two. Carolina with a little disrespect of the net there, but they got another chance here to get off of this one here in game two. And that did spin back did and, hit, the, and the, hit the post, so that yep. will be a redo. Let's see this here on the replay. It barely touches, but it does touch, so it's a redo. And Pablo getting a little greedy on the serve there. Just sails long. So 4-1 here, game two. Yeah, a really nice drive there by Pablo. Not only getting that ball deep in the court with some power, but a little topspin kick to make the bounce a little more unpredictable. And Parento could handle it. This will be a redo. That's what I like about Sock. He's always having such a good time. He engages people. He's just great with the crowd. Just loves to compete. And that's a wild forehand there by Pereno. So which is down, down four to one out. right now. I, I am okay with them going for their serve a little bit more. I'd like to see them put a little pressure on um, Jack and Catherine. The other thing is, I do want to see Pablo speed up on Catherine a little bit more. I know Catherine um, can handle it, but I just want to see him put a little pressure, show her a different look. Yep. It was definitely there. <laughs> yeah, a really nice drive there by Carolina. You know, sometimes in these close matches, 
something like that little net cord that slides there, it, it's gonna, it could change the game, it could change the momentum. Oh, and Sock coming all the way over to that sideline. Parento stepping back, giving him space. We are in Lakeville, Minnesota at this beautiful Lifetime Fitness. One of my favorite venues to play at, Danny, on the PPA Tour. You know, I had the chance to play a little pickleball this week with Brahm. Uh, the CEO of Lifetime, and what a time that was. I remember speaking to him about two and a half years ago, and he was a visionary in seeing the theme that pickleball was going to absolutely explode, and he took pickleball to almost every Lifetime there is in the country, and credit to him for having that vision and that foresight. Great play. Honestly, she covered that middle very nicely. Jack left the court. That's exactly where she had to go with that ball. Now, I will say, so Brom, talking to him the other day, he has a lot of, a lot of uh, visions for pickleball coming up. And if you have a chance to come to this tournament, I, I fully recommend it. I love this place as well. Telez trying to reset that backhand, just clips the tape. This will be a redo in the, in the PPA. We will redo the net where it serves, as long as it doesn't land in the kitchen. And there's a total miss hit there from Pablo Telez. So this will be a side out here with Sock and Printer trying to finally get off of this five here. And Sock. Got the ball he wanted, an easy little backhand roll for him, but it sails long, but they have a second serve here. I like Pablo coming over like that and being assertive and being aggressive when he gets those high forehands even if he has to come all the way to the sideline like we saw Sock do, three points to go. Yeah, great job there by Pereno. Yeah. Along with Danny, this is Dave, proud to bring you this live action here all afternoon long at the Pickleball Central National. USA Indoor Championships along the Carvana PPA Tour. For a while there, uh, Parento was blinded with Sock in front of her. So tough to execute that ball. And there's an unforced error by Sock. So we are all square here at 5-5 five, five here in game two. Oh, great reset. So that'll be a side out. Yeah, Catherine sees Pablo back and keeps the pressure on him there. What a great get by Pablo off this Ernie as we watch the replay, Danny. Yeah, you know, Catherine does everything right there where she slides into the middle and to cover that, and Pablo actually went almost went behind her and she was able to cover it. And I think that's the shot that Sock has to work on in the next part of his kind of... Uh, maturity as a pro pickleball player is being able to roll that backhand with some topspin consistently like he does on his forehand side for that to be a weapon.
Yeah, great job there by Sock, and, and he laughs after that point. That was a really good hands battle. That's that, that's that matchup that I was talking about, those two, the lefty-righty being in front of each other, who's going to hold each other accountable. Again, I, I think I've mentioned it before, but that, that, that's the same exact spot where Pablo has to cover line, right? He can't let Jack go behind him, and Carolina, Carolina has to cover that middle again. It's very tough. So that'll be another point off that net court. And with that, we will have a timeout here at 8-6 here in game two at the Pickleball Central National. USA Pickleball Championships. We'll be right back, folks. Great things happen when good friends get together. So grab a glass, amigo. Our tequila is your tequila. Our casa is your casa. Welcome back, Pickleball friends, along with Danny Jensen, Dave the Badger, Weinbach. We are in the later stages here of game two with Parento and Sock looking to close this out. What do they have to do, Danny, to finish this match right now? You know, I don't think they change anything right now. I think I'm really liking Jack running around his forehand. Pablo's kind of questioning whether or not he got a hold line, hold middle. J uh, Jack's keeping him kind of in that unknown unknown land, and it's kind of nice right now watching this. And Sock getting a little bit ambitious there. That was not a ball that he should try to drive or attack in any way. It actually was way below the net when he made contact with the ball. I love the Ernie move. I like the aggressiveness, but he should just dinked it cross court, and that would have bought him time to get back. And that's going to sail along. An update here on center court. Uh, Deckel, Barr, and Tina Piznik did take game one over Kovalova and Wright, 11-7. And that's going to sail just wide. So with the side out here, let's see if this is going to play a little, a little bit of a uh, disadvantage for Tellez and uh, Carolina because they're going to have to be on the switch. And with Jack Sox, you know, forehand down in the game, he's definitely going to drive one, I think. Good return to Catherine. Well, the mistake that Carolina made there is the middle ball. That's the one what I call no-go zone is to the sock forehand in the middle. Even off the bounce, he is such a dangerous weapon. So why go there? That time, sock getting a little cute and just came over the top a little early. And we're at match point number two. Let's see what they can do if they can close it out here. Oh, terrific one-two punch there by Tellez, and, and Pablo says, not yet. So they're going to get the ball back here on this side out, serving at 7-10 here in game two. You know, I know, I know we all see Jack Sock jump around, you know, playing a big role. But we got to give some credit to Catherine Prentow. She is just playing a solid pickleball, and that's exactly what she needs to do. And she knows her role, and they need it. Yeah, I really like this partnership, Danny. Um, Catherine obviously had a, a lot of choices of who she could have picked to play with this year on the men's, on the mixed tour. And I think she made a great choice here. 
you know, besides being such a great player, uh, Sock is such a supportive partner. He keeps it light. He's always smiling. He's laughing. And that's really important to keep your partner relaxed. Human beings play better when they're more relaxed. And that's going to sail long. And, and there you matched. have it. So Parento and Sock will advance on. And they will move into the quarterfinals. the quarterfinals. And they will take on Tyra Black, I believe, Christian Alshon, or... Oh, and that's the next match. They'll take on the winner of the next match that we're going to have right here live on the grandstand court. So thank you, YouTube audience, for staying with us all day long. We will be right back here with this next mixed pro doubles match right here on the PPA Tour. Rose-Posay sunscreen blocks up to 98% of UVB rays and helps prevent visible sun damage. The only sunscreen with Cellox Shield UVA UVB protection plus antioxidants. La Roche-Posay, the official sunscreen of the Professional Pickleball Association. Every time someone tells you they vacation in the same place every year, it should really make you wonder, why? Travel like you mean it with IHG Hotels and Resorts. Follow your vibe. Busy. Flavor for every vibe. I'm not actually a stereotypical senior. I just play one in cheesy health insurance commercials. In real life, I have Humana because they see me. Listen to what I need. It's refreshing. Humana. Introducing Verse 6 Raw, the sweet spot of price and performance. All of the features you asked for, brought to you by the experts at Pickleball Central. Torre T700 Raw Carbon Technology creates lasting spin and a unique elongated shape amplifies power and broad court coverage. Experienced enhanced control with a hybrid core and the flexibility of an extended handle for two-handed shots. An octagonal grip with sealed edges guarantees comfort. Verse 6 Raw, your game elevated. mortgages. Our aim is to empower you on your holistic journey to well-being and longevity by helping you achieve your financial and personal goals. Our new completely free rate app focuses on community, nutrition, and exercise, as well as offering a variety of financial tips and tools. The rate app was built to support your mind, body, and spirit, helping to simplify your life and reduce your stress. Download the rate app and start living your best life. Big it up, big it up. Yeah. Play hard for fun to win to live.
Whatever you're playing, there's Penetrax Joint and Muscle Cream to let you play on. Deep penetrating relief without greasiness, irritation, or unpleasant odor. Inspired by nature and 100% guaranteed. Try Penetrax and play on. Tens of thousands of customers wrote about Carvana being smooth in their five-star reviews, including Terry. To be honest, I thought it was almost too smooth, but Carvana was super transparent from beginning to end. Car details, financing, every step, and there were no surprises. Well, my monthly payment did come out lower than expected. Then I got to pick up my Mustang at the vending machine, and it was so fun and exciting, I did a little dance. <laughs> Trust me, financing my car with Carvana was super smooth. Finance your next car with Carvana today. Welcome back, Pickleball friends. We are live here at the Pickleball Central National USA Indoor Pickleball Championships along the Carvana PPA Tour, along with Danny Jensen. This is Dave the Badger Weinbach bringing you this live action all afternoon long here on the grandstand court. We got a special one right here, Danny. We got Christian Alshon and Tyra Hurricane Black taking on Federico Staxrud and Rachel Warbacher in another round of 16 matchup. Yes, and the winner is gonna take on, um, if I'm not mistaken, the winner of the last game that we just saw, Jack Sock and Catherine Pranto. Correct, and I had Alshon on a singles match yesterday in Grandstand Court where he won a three game thriller and then lost to Connor Garnett, another three game thriller. He is playing the best I've ever seen him I think this is a great partnership with him and Hurricane Black. I'm really impressed with how she's developed her game. We'll talk more about that partnership as this match progresses. Tell me more about Staxrud and Rachel Warabacher, Danny. Yeah, so Rachel's a little bit newer on the scene than you may have seen, and actually so is Tyra Black, but um, you know, she's gonna be one of those players that um, has kind of surprised people. So right, she's played with the Anna Bright, and you've seen her on the um, on the squeeze in MLP. And uh, watching her play is actually very fun because again, she played that like second fiddle kind of what you may say to Anna Bright, but then she came out as a star, right? And so um, she's gonna do the exact same thing. She's gonna stay consistent and watch Fed like. Fed, Fed moves may be better than anybody in pro pickleball. He's just, he's a mover. Obviously, you see that in singles, just like you're going to watch Christian Alshon. Uh, but, but Fed's forehand, his drives, everything, he's getting better at doubles, too. I mean, everybody used to say, oh, he's just a singles guy. He is not just a singles guy. This guy is an all-around pickleball player. He sure is. And, you know, I had a chance to do a couple of Rachel's matches at the Masters in Palm Springs, and where she teamed up with Anna Bright. And she brings an amazing amount of pace and accuracy. She does not miss many balls. She's very consistent. The ball comes off her paddle with a lot of power. She likes to roll both her backhand and her forehand. So the ball has a lot of topspin and it's coming down. I had a chance to play a, a lot of rec games with her out in Palm Springs as well. And she's a very dangerous player. She takes time away from you. She does a great job of being all the way at that kitchen line and leaning in and getting the ball way in front of her body, which means the ball is coming back to her opponent quicker. And that's what I mean about taking time away from your opponent. So I love this matchup, this partnership with her and Fed. 
Van has really come into his own on the double side. I love watching this guy play. I love playing rec games with him. When people ask me, when you play against Fed, how should you attack him? And we used to be able to attack him a little bit on the backhand side, but he's improved his cross-court backhand dink so much where it is not a weakness at all anymore when you talk about Fed's game. Not at all. And, you know, in the men's side, you see him playing with Pablo all the time, and Pablo will run around. Fed is covering a lot of court, and Fed loves it, right? It's You get that ball outside of him, he has a punishing backhand, a great forehand. Um, it's going to be really exciting to watch the four players that are on the court right now. They are athletic and great at pickleball. And that's the pace that I'm talking about with Rachel. She's extremely aggressive. Any ball she can look to attack, that's her bias. And she wants to really bring pace to you. What a kit there. I mean, great lob. Hurricane Tyra goes back and gets that and well, sets it nicely. Yeah, back. one of the interesting things to watch in this match is I think Alshon will play much more of the court than what Fed will do. What I mean by that is he'll poach and he'll move to his right and try to take more balls than I think Fed will do. So let's keep an eye on that and see if they try to go behind Alshon and burn him on his backhand side when he cheats too much in the middle. And that's gonna sail way wide. You know, I've had the chance to play against a few of these players, but uh, Tyra, man, she has some power when she get, when you get the ball up, so you don't want to do that to her. Quick 3-0 lead here, Dave. In a rare unforced error there by Black, but that forehand cross-court dink, she is usually extremely consistent with her cross-court dinking. And good lead there by Alshon reading that going out. So let's see if Hurricane Black and Alsham can get on the board here. And that is gonna help their cause. That's one of the places that uh, Rachel's gotta be really careful with that drive down the middle because Alshon's gonna be sitting there on his forehand side looking to take any ball he can. If I had to say there's one area that Rachel uh, can work on in her game, it would certainly be the soft shots. Obviously, being a college tennis player, she's very comfortable with all the tennis-type shots. You know, the, the serve, the return of serve, the drives, the punch volleys, that's all natural to her. Where, where she'll take her game to a whole new level is the consistency of both her drop and the consistency of her executing unattackable dinks. You can see how comfortable she is with that style. Yeah, the power game she loves. She's a uh, South Carolina Gamecock, you know, so she played in college there, so if we have any South Carolina fans, this may be your person to root for. And that's the ball she loves. Of course, Christian Alsan just recently signing with Paddle Tech. Uh, that Pro XR uh, just bought. So, Christian uh, drilling a lot with Anna Lee Waters back home. We just had our first warning on Rachel Rohrbacher's serve. So, it, I think the ball came up just a little bit, and she got a warning. The next one will be a point um, deduction, I believe. Or, no, it'll be just a side out. That's what it is. 
Yeah, and Rachel took the wrong target there. I think if you're Warbecker in stock shoot again, you really have two choices. You either go to towards Tyra Hurricane Black's right side of her body, or right foot, or you go behind Alshon to his backhand side. That's the spot that Rachel can't go because she's gonna pay a steep price like that every time she tries to attack middle. So that's a key point, I think, to watch as this match develops. The other key, Danny, to, to watch in this match that I'm watching very carefully is to see how assertive Stackshoot gets on this side of the net. So far, he's let Rachel basically play her side. He's not coming over very much. He's not playing super aggressive. I think, I think if they get down, especially at the later stages of a game, look for Stackshoot to get more aggressive and assert himself more. correctly called wide. I don't mind that play going behind Christian as he's cheating into the middle. Great setup there by Fed. And Rachel just hesitated a split second, not knowing if Fed was gonna come in after it. She didn't want to take his forehand away and I think that's what caused that unforced error. There's one of the targets. And there is Fed asserting himself right on cue. In that point, great job there. And I think that's what he has to do for them to move on here and advance into the quarterfinals here, Danny. I really like that play from Rachel, just going to that Left, left hip of Christian Alshon and making and getting the pop up for Fed being the setup. That just sails long. Boy, know, it did look like she hit it very hard. I don't know if you guys caught that, but there was maybe a little finger wag from Christian Alshon there. I think she should have reset that ball. Once that ball, folks, gets below your knee, it's reset or block time. If it's tape high to the net or higher, that's when I want people to drive it. And a big fist pump by Alshon, knowing what a key point we are here in as this game one progresses. We are all square here at four. Wow, what an angle there by Rachel. Just great thinking all around. Her and Tyra, Tyra's playing very good on that point too. All right, so there's a few uh, few words going back and forth, a little, little extra there, so from Christian and from Fed, so I'm excited to see this match play out.
the point of the match. <laughs> what an awesome play. Tyra doing so good on defense there. What an incredible point. All players showing incredible athleticism. Great defense. One thing that separates the pros, when they're hitting overheads and somebody resets, they're able to get back into that dink rally much easier and be okay with it, right? Restarting the point. Great finish there by Fed after a terrific setup by Rachel. See the depth of those balls, Danny? That's such a key in pickleball. It's not just about the pace, it's about the location. Oh, and there's a freebie. We have not seen many of those really all day long here on Mixed Pro Doubles Day. After an incredible dig by Kristen Alshon Black with an unforced forehand in the net. So that gets us all square here at 5-5 five, five here in a thrilling game one. And that's going to sail wide. So Fed and Rachel with a 6-5 lead here. We play two out of three games up to 11, and you must win by two in each game. I love how Rachel slid to her left after Fed came hard right. It's an automatic switch. All right, second serve here. I noticed that Rachel's cr kind of crowding the middle a little bit more. I think she needs to give Fed a little bit more space in that middle because you said it earlier, Fed's one of the best movers we have on the whole tour, and his forehand is a huge weapon. I think she needs to let him take that. You know, all four of these players are doing a very good job at returning the serve well. Um, very few short returns, and a couple weird bounces that they're handling very, very well, which is awesome to see. It's a rare missed uh, third by Alshon in the net. And he's looking at the ball uh, like it reacted differently. I don't mind that drive at all by Rachel. You know, playing to her strengths, that ball was a little bit below the tape out of the net. So that's an okay drive. Yeah, and Fed's dink just hung up a ball too high, but that's all it takes, Danny, with these level of athletes. Yeah, Tyra reaches in very nicely, takes away time and space. Great setup from Rachel. That's something that you, you see very often in uh, mixed pro doubles. She sets that nicely up, slides to her right, lets Fed come through the middle, puts it away.
Yeah, good attack there, ball by uh, Rachel, right into the body of Alshon, who is not able to extend his hands and arms and react to that ball, so Rachel and Fed get the ball back here at 6-5 in the first game. Oh, that's going to sail over Tyra. Hurricane Black's paddle and go way out, but they'll have a second serve here at 6-5, trying to get to 7 here in this best 2 out of 3 games to 11. And that's going to sail long as well after a wonderful reset there by Rachel. Oh, and Fed is going to appeal this call. I believe it's 6-6 six, six now. The referee gave the point. And Fed clapping, saying great shot on that forehand, on that drive down the middle for a flat-out winner. So 7-6 here. Great recovery from Christian because Rachel had a, an unbelievable dink behind him and he was able to get it out of the reach of her Ernie and then, you know, obviously set up uh, the winner at there for Tyra. Yeah, and the winner of this match will move on and take on Sock and Parento in the quarterfinals. And that's going to sail long. So a thrilling, highly competitive game one, just as we thought, Danny. Oh, and that, that third shot drop really floats high and an easy forehand put away there for Christian Alshon. Yeah, we're, we're, we're playing, right now we're watching two of the most athletic pickleball players in the world, so you don't want to leave that one too high. And a huge come on there by Rachel, knowing what an important time we are here in this game one. It's going to sail wide, getting a little bit greedy there. She doesn't need to try to hit a winner there. She just needs to try to keep Alshon honest and keep him moving. And there's uh, Hurricane Black getting a little bit greedy on the serve. Great hands from Hurricane Black, keeping that point going. Rohrbacher says, that is enough. Fed takes a timeout right before their serve, down 8-7 on the one. So with that timeout, we will take our own timeout because we do have one left, Danny. Dave Weinbach, Danny Jensen, live here at the Pickleball Central National Indoor Championships.
Welcome back, Pickleball friends. Dave Weinbach, Danny Jensen, live here at the Pickleball Central National USA Indoor Championships here in beautiful Lakeville, Minnesota. We are at Lifetime Fitness. 24 dedicated pickleball courts here. What an incredible facility. Here we go. Oh, I actually thought Fed was going to catch up to that ball and throw a lob up, but just out of his reach. So look, we have a second serve here at 7-8. Great side out coming out of that timeout on the one. Something that Tyra and Christian, I'm sure, you know, were really hoping to do, but that's not easy. Fed had a chance there, Danny, and just did not do enough with that ball after stepping over the kitchen and making this Ernie move. He had his chance. Ball called just long. Referee saying he could not overrule that. Very close. Hard to even see from this camera angle. Difference is millimeters there. Game point. Seven ten two here. Great attack balls there by Rohrbach, really putting a lot of heat and a lot of pressure on Alshon there. So now they've got it to eight ten in a thrilling game one. Just clips the top of the net and rolls in for a winner. Rohrbacher not able to adjust to that ball. And we'll have a reserve here after that net court. And another second game point here. Looked like Black didn't fully commit to that shot. So they got another chance here at game point. And Alshon not liking the Vulcan ball in his hand. He thinks it's a little bit out of its round form. All players, though, have to agree to uh, He's to, asking for a new ball, balls. and Fed is saying no. He's saying play. We're on game point. I like this play from Fed because right now the ball's in Christian Alshon's head. And, it's, and Fed knows that, so he's he's playing his odds. Great point there. So that's a all important side out at eight ten on one here. Timeout called by Christian Alshon. So with that timeout, we'll take our own break here and be right back here with you live. 
at Lifetime Fitness in Lakeville, Minnesota. When the game gets intense, don't let residue ruin your play. Reset, the ultimate solution to bring back the grip, spin, and control to your carbon fiber pickleball paddle. Say goodbye to caked on gunk and slippery surfaces and say hello to a paddle that feels brand new. Backed by science and made with love by passionate pickleball players just like you. Experience the reset difference today. Reset, play hard, play clean. Along with Danny Jensen, Dave the Badger Weinbach, back live here at the Pickleball Central National USA Indoor Championships in a thrilling game one here, 9-10. I like the move by Fed, he just don't like the execution. An opportunity there. So, so two kind of unforced errors there by Stockshrewd could prove very costly here in about 20 seconds, Danny. And that's gonna sail wide, so they got a second chance at this first game. And the lob goes just out. Very good play. They had them running all over the place, fed with the missed Ernie opportunity. But uh, what a first game there we just had. One of the most competitive mixed doubles pro games I have seen all year long along the PPA Tour. And we'll be back with game two. Stick with us, fans. Ever notice how seniors and health insurance commercials all look the same? because all of these companies see us the same, but not Humana. They see me. Humana. La Roche-Posay sunscreen blocks up to 98% of UVB rays and helps prevent visible sun damage. The only sunscreen with Celloc Shield UVA UVB protection plus antioxidants. La Roche-Posay, the official sunscreen of the Professional Pickleball Association. <laughs> Welcome back, Pickleball friends. We are live here and really appreciate our YouTube audience who has stayed with us live all day long here, along with Danny Pickleball Jensen. This is Dave the Badger of Weinbach bringing you this live action here after an unbelievable dramatic first game. Danny, what do you think Rachel and Fed have to adjust slightly in order to potentially take game two and force a deciding game three. I'll do it right after this first point here. So there's a few opportunities in the first game where they didn't put the ball away when they think they had the opportunity to, and I think just executing on those few plays obviously can turn the pointer. I mean, a two-point game in the first game, not too much of a difference, you know. Stick to what you know. And Rachel, Rachel with two kills early on in this game.
great dinking. I mean, all around great dinking. That's a that's a point where Christian and Fed are both trying to insert themselves into the point without screwing it up. But you know what? Great play by the girls. Warbacher with an easy uh, forehand drive. That's her favorite shot. Very disappointed in herself to dump that in the net. What a point. Incredible point. Amazing defense there by Hurricane Black. Got some incredible balls back, but Fed says we are not losing this point. Terrific offense there by Rachel and Fed. Surprised Alshon didn't take that third ball there, but they got away with it. So we are all square at two here in game two. That's wow. going to sail long, so another great point. All four players, Danny, displaying the incredible pickleball skills and athleticism that we were talking about in, that, in the pregame. Alshon got the ball he wanted and just got a little greedy, and it sails long, so Rachel and Fed Serving at 2-3 here in a game that they must have. And that's going to sail long. Dave Weinbach, Danny Jensen bringing you this live action here all afternoon long at the Pickleball Central. National USA Indoor Championships along the Carvana PPA Tour. Black just hung that dink up, a ball too high, and that's all that Rachel Warbacher needs. I believe that Tyre was thinking that Christian was gonna come get it. It caught tape and she kinda had to go through it and just a little off balance maybe. That is a great ball, something that we talked in pregame about as Christian is covering middle. Uh, Rachel goes behind him. So we'll take our own break here and be right back with you with the conclusion of game two. friends, Danny Jensen, Dave Weinbach, courtside here at the Grandstand Courts here on Mixed Pro Doubles Day, and we have a dramatic thriller in front of us. 
Danny, after a unbelievably competitive game one, it won't surprise me if the second game is the same thing where we end up with an 11-9, 12-10, 13-11 type game here. Here we go. You know, they did all the hard work and they got back to the kitchen and missed an easy one, but uh, there's that show of athleticism again here. in game two. I thought Rachel did such a great job in the middle of that point with her attack ball down the middle. And then she got the ball she wanted at the end. And that forehand roll, forehand just sails long. Yeah, that's a great ball. Recognizing Alshon moving hard to his right, pinching the middle, goes behind him with that beautiful two-handed backhand. So we are all square at four. That's a really good spot. Rachel picking her targets well, Danny. She took a little bit off that one uh, from the last one, exact same shot but Christian had to hit that one. Just goes long. I think she set up that point perfectly. I like the attack. And Fed now serving on the two. Five, four, two. A little run like this might be just the, the stuff that uh, separates the two of these teams because it's going to be close, neck and neck, all the way to the end. I agree. Four, six, one. So four six one here. And a rare missed third by Alshon. Speaking of Alshon, Dan, I gotta tell you, this is the most active I've ever seen him play in doubles along the PPA tour. Very impressed with him today after a great singles day he had. And I really think it helped his confidence yesterday with some huge wins in the pro singles draw yesterday. So let's see if uh, Rachel and Fed can get off at the six. Yeah, and that just clips the net and then clips her, Tyra's paddle and goes out of bounds. So that's going to be a point. It's very difficult. Nothing you can really do about that one. It, it's probably one of the most frustrating things, though, as the team that it happens to when you're on the court. He'll get it. Oh, what a stab volley there, covering the center by Hurricane Black. And I really think Rachel was surprised that ball even came back. Yeah. 
I love the power that Rachel's playing with right now. She sees she sees red right now. She's going after it, and um, you can see that she's she's winning a few points right now, up eight four in the second. Early on in that point, Fed thought that that ball going to his backhand was going to sail wide, but it clips the line, and a great recovery there by Staxrud. Oh, and Rachel had to hit that ball. It would have been in, and she did not want the ball to bounce behind her because then they're at a significant disadvantage. So five, eight, two. Yeah, that all started with uh, Hurricane Black, third shot floating high to the Warbacher forehand, and that's a recipe for disaster. You know, we just mentioned the net clips, and it's happened, I think, on the last four, four or five points. A rare missed third there by Fed. You know, he has been money all day long here on his thirds. I didn't think it was there, Danny. You know, the ball uh, checked up more than what Rachel thought, and it, I just don't think the play got there. Unless she would have aimed to the corner, like the back third of the court, she might have been able to hook it in. I don't mind the decision there by Alshon. He just came over the top too early and dumped it in the net, but that, that shot is there. He has that shot, and he loves that little backhand flick roll. Did that land in? I am not, from our angle, it was a little, it was a little, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but yeah, I guess I, so. Uh, I, think it, I think it did because I heard a come on from Alshon. Yep. Yeah, let's get a let's see if we can get a replay of that last point that I think the ball clipped the line here. So let's see if we can get a good angle on it here, Danny. Had yeah. to have right on the line. Definitely in. Man. Thank Another you to the team up in the broadcast booth, you know, helping us get that replay because that was a great tight, job tight in the one. truck. And that's three missed third shot drops in a row from Stockstrude. So that starts to get into your confidence. Don't be surprised if the next third that Fed gets, if he starts driving more of them. And, and there you have it where Stackstrude is questioning his, his decision-making and his confidence, you can see, has gone down a little bit, Danny. He's not committing now to the shot. You know, I don't mind that play, actually. There's something, there's a teaching point here for people watching. And watch Tyra Black right now. She's taking balls out of the air while dinking and putting a lot more pressure onto Rachel and Fed rather than letting it bounce and letting them set up, I think it's something that a lot more people need to utilize. That's going to sail wide and a big bombo by Stockshrew, knowing that they have to capture this game to force a deciding game three. So let's see if they can get off eight here.
fantastic play there. What a point there and an example of how Rachel Rohrabacher has increased her execution consistency on her unattackable dinks so much than more since when I saw her three or four months ago and credit to her because it's taken her game to a whole new level. We all know that she has the power shots and the drives and the punch volleys and the blocks and the resets where the question was, if anything, on Rachel's game was the consistency and the patience with the unattackable dink game. So really impressed with her all day long that I've seen her, not just in this match, Danny. So we're going to take a break with the players here, get a little hydration here in the booth, and we'll be right back with you with the conclusion here of this dramatic game two. We are back live here for the conclusion of game two, 9-7. He's gonna get it. Oh, he was there and took the wrong angle on the ATP. Let's watch this again. I think the ball got wide enough. He just needed to aim that ball, Danny, in the back third of the court and not try to bring it such an angle back towards the kitchen line. Very tough when you're reaching that far though. Good effort. Great hustle. And an awesome job by Rohrbacher and Stackshrude hitting their targets, creating that high forehand and Fed puts it away. So as this match deserves, we will be going to a deciding third game. Stick with us. Dave Weinbach, Danny Jensen, we are ready for deciding game three. Thoughts, Danny? You know, looking back at that last game towards the end, there was a point at 8-7 and right before the timeout, that was, and, you know, they were able to put the ball away, and they've, they've gotten stuck on that a few times with uh, Christian and Tyra getting balls back and everything like that. So um, them being able to put that ball away, go up 9-7, get a timeout from Christian and uh, Tyra, and then be able to put the game away right after that. Just uh, awesome not letting anybody have, uh, or Christian and Tyra have that opportunity to come back and maybe steal the game from them. So, as we talked about in the pregame, we knew this was gonna be a tight, thriller, highly competitive match, and not surprised at all to see this game go three as, get a little wink here from Federique Stackshoot. You know, the guy just loves to play, loves to compete. Uh, loves to be on the big stage, seems to play his best in in medal matches and on the grandstand and center court. And he relishes these opportunities, Danny. And when you look at Tyra Black and Christian Alshon, I really like this partnership. I'm hoping that this is a trend that we're gonna see more with them. I know Christian has been playing with a lot of different players, both on the men's and women's side. and. I think he's trying to feel out, you know, where he has the best chemistry, and uh, I, I love this partnership for him. Here we go. What a ball down the line from Rachel. That's something that we talked about beginning of the game, and this is the first time she didn't just dink it, she went fully down the line for a speed up. Amazing shot. What a beautifully controlled inside out forehand. 
Remember, new ball at the beginning of every single game, so they have a new ball again. So, so really how fast. does that play differently, Danny? What do the players have to adjust to? Can you talk about that after this point? Well, you see, the ball's not the ball's going to play a little bit faster. That's the number one thing. And then the number two thing is it's not as scuffed up. Not as much spin's going to be on the ball either. So. You know, I, I've seen a few balls more skid earlier in the game, but less um, out of round balls or, um, you know, if there's little spider cracks every now and then. Oh, what a fantastic reset by Rachel Warbacher to set up. Look at that. And attack right into the Alshon body. I like it. I like the decision there by Rachel throwing that ball up deep into the corner. And early in that point, Danny, we saw some incredible defense and a reset by Rachel Warbacher to keep them in the point. Oh, and she got the ball she wanted. That's why she's so disappointed. You know, in that, after they take an early 3-0 lead here. After this point, I'll, I'll explain something here. So she hit the correct ball, the correct speed up, everything like that, and the execution was a little off. That's good. That's okay. You just don't want to hit the wrong choice, right? That's where you should be more upset with yourself. going to just sail wide. You know, I'm so impressed with the decision-making of Rachel uh, Rohrbach. You know, early in her pickleball life, she would have a bias of attacking everything she possibly could. And she's doing so much of a better job of taking balls that are low and either resetting them or going for the unattackable dink instead of trying the miracle drive. So really impressed with her patience and discipline. Another example of it. Go. Go. And right on cue, Warbacher seems to be making the correct decisions. Ball after ball, very impressive point there by her and, and Staxrude. And now they've got the ball back in their hands, trying to build on this early 4-0 lead in this deciding third game. And there's a, a kitchen line violation by Alshon's left foot, so they do get to five here. They want to get to six so they can get on the switch. That's the most important part right now. That's what they're thinking about. And, and that's gonna do it. So now they, the players will switch sides. They will get a little bit of a hydration break here and Rohrbacher and Stockshude will be serving at 6-0 here when we come back live at the Pickleball Central National USA Indoor Pickleball Championships. Ever notice how seniors and health insurance commercials all look the same? Because all of these companies see us the same, but not Humana. They see me. Humana. Danny Jensen, Dave the Badger, Weinbach, live here at beautiful Lifetime Fitness in Lakeville, Minnesota. We're about 16 miles south of the Twin Cities. And we are at 6-0 here in game three. Uh, 
That's a tough ball to try to attack. I think she should have reset that one, Danny. Very important to get that side out right after the uh, getting the six. And we are seeing a more assertive Federico Stackshrew. We talked about this in the first game, Danny. And I thought as this match progressed, he would need to step up. Uh, and the referee is a little concerned that the ball the kid, the hit the hit. chin of this infant uh, right in front of us, Danny. But I think. I think the child is okay, and the referee says play on. So 0-6-2. And that's gonna sail wide, so Christian and Tyra cannot get on the board here in a situation where I think they need to a, get a point or a two. This is a must side out without any points. They do not want to go down seven or eight. And that is correctly called long. So a freebie there gets fed and Rachel to 7-0 and a commanding lead here in this deciding game three. And that is two missed returns from Christian. He's looking at his paddle, but you know, I, I understand his frustration here. It's a rare unforced error there by Alshon. So after an incredible finish in game two, Rachel and Fed continue this momentum and build on this commanding lead in game three. We are at 9-0. On the one still. And a nice attack ball there by Alshon under control, rolling that forehand with some topspin to get it below the net. And that's going to sail long, so we're at crunch time here, Danny. Remember, after game one, I'll mention in a second. I, I almost, I probably jinxed it, but I was gonna say after game one we mentioned what do they gotta do, and they just had to put a few more balls away, put a few more balls in the court, and put a little, keep the pressure on them. They haven't changed much, and look how good they're doing. I thought that might have been sailing long, but Rohrabacher hits it, frames it out of bounds. Yeah, I think that ball was certainly going long. Yeah. Oh, good choice. And that's gonna sail wide, so this is what Christian Alshon and Hurricane Black had to have. So after this mini run of three, a timeout by uh, Fed and Rachel, and we will take our own break and be back live with you here on a filled grandstand court. Follow your vibe. Busy. Flavor for every vibe. Back live, Dave the Badger, Weinbach, Danny, Pickleball Jensen, proud to bring you this live action all day long here on this grandstand court. We got a packed house here. PPA doing a fantastic job again running this event. A special thank you to our live YouTube audience who has stuck with us all day long. And don't leave after this match, folks. We got another thriller coming your way here on Grandstand. 
and that's going to sail long. I don't, I don't mind them playing a little aggressive right now. Down a little bit, maybe get a few, uh, a few balls to land. Nine three. I love how Tyra gets all the way to the line, Danny, and really leans in and uses her really long arms. You know, people don't realize it. She has really long arms and very large hands, and she uses that to her advantage. I love watching her play singles, too. You know, she's so strong and so athletic. Terrific two-handed backhand. She can hurt you in so many ways. Correctly called wide. Yes, so they'll get a second serve at this to try to get to four here. And that is not going to get them to four, so Fed and Rachel will have the ball. Trying to build on this lead. Yeah, really controlled ball there by Hurricane Black. She had a lot of choices with, with that ball. And I like going soft middle, change up the pace. Oh, that's a great finish there by Rachel. One yep. of the things I often say, Danny, is you don't want to be a predictable pickleball player. So you want to change up not only locations, change up pace, change up spin, give your opponent different looks. And this brings us to match point. And Alshon and Hurricane Black say not yet. So that's going to be a side out here. 3 10 on one. Yep. Don't miss thirds here. Not the best time for that forehand unforced error. That's going to sail wide, so they do not build off that three, and I think mentally that's going to really affect them here, Danny. Two more match points coming up. And there's one saved after an excellent backhand roll by Alshon getting that ball down. And after that backhand cross court dink in the net, you have the match. So an easier game than we thought there on game three with Rohrbach and Stocks, who taking control early, Danny, up 6-0 at the turn, and really never let Hurricane Black and Christian Alshon get into that game. It's, it's, it's great of them, and I'm excited to uh, to see what they can do in the next round. You know, they're going to be playing uh, Jack Sock and Catherine Prenta. Let's see what they can do. Yep, so we're going to take a break, and we'll be back with you with another quarterfinal match here on the Grandstand Court. We'll be right back. Stick with us, fans.
funeral. Pack all the things. Fly on your schedule. Reward yourself and the girls whenever. Stay or go when you wanna. And more is on the way. So when you're ready to go, go with heart. Go with Southwest. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the Carvana PPA Tour. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the Carvana PPA Tour. Every time someone tells you they vacation in the same place every year, it should really make you wonder, why? Travel like you mean it with IHG Hotels and Resorts. Play. Hard. For fun. To win. To live. Whatever your play, there's Penetrax Joint and Muscle Cream to let you play on. Deep penetrating relief without greasiness, irritation, or unpleasant odor. Inspired by nature and 100% guaranteed. Try Penetrax and play on. Welcome back to Grandstand Court. Dave the Badger, Weinbach, and Danny Jensen here on the call. Awaiting this game between Deco Bar, Tina Pisnik, and uh, Elise Jones and Connor Garnett. I'm excited for this matchup. Uh, you know, some of the best players in the game right now. This is one of the first quarterfinals uh, of the day here on Mixed Doubles Day. All these guys have at least played two games. And, uh, you know, something I'm really looking forward to here, you know, Deckel, how much Deckel is going to move, threatening Ernie, everything from there. And then, you know, watching Connor and how much Connor can create off his backhand. Elise Jones playing defense. Everything's going to be fun here. Tina Pisnik, rising star to watch, if not the star to watch in this game. She she has um, she's used to this. She's used to being on uh, you know in the quarters and uh, excited to watch her play. So um, we are gonna head to break and be right back for game one right after this. Roche-Posay sunscreen blocks up to 98% of UVB rays and helps prevent visible sun damage. The only sunscreen with Cellox Shield UVA UVB protection plus antioxidants. La Roche-Posay, the official sunscreen of the Professional Pickleball Association. Notice how seniors and health insurance commercials all look the same? Because all of these companies see us the same. But not Humana. They see me. Humana. Well, it's easy. I play longer, I feel stronger, and I recover faster. It's a must, it's effective, and it's stylish.
welcome back to Grandstand Court. Here for a quarterfinal matchup between Deckel Barr, Tina Pisnik, Connor Garnett, and Elise Jones. Excited for this one. There's a few things that I think that we should be keeping an eye on. One, Deckel's serve. It's a it's a weapon. It's something that a lot of people can uh, can tell once they see the pace of it how difficult it is. And on top of that, you're watching him with the spin pace and then how big his third uh, third shot drive can be. Um, watch out for uh, a few of those. Uh, bang bang plays here coming up uh, one thing I want to mention is you know we're watching Tina Piznik um, from Slovenia now Tina Piznik highest uh, singles ranking in tennis was 29 in the world so we have some extremely talented players here um, on the PPA tour and, and they're coming over into pickleball and I'm, I'm extremely excited to watch her and her game develop over the next few years because uh, she's definitely going to be a, a rising star Dave, we are heading into game one here. What do you think is the keys after uh, this first point? And that's not quite gonna get back there, but a good decision there by Deckel Barr to go around the post. This is a matchup that I couldn't wait to see on grandstand court. I'm so glad they put this on the court because Piznik and Barr, a real danger team here in this bracket, just took out Lucy Kovalova and Matt Wright on center court. And there you saw a fantastic executed lob by Elise Jones. And then we saw the best two-handed backhand maybe in the history of pickleball in Connor Garnett. Love watching this guy play. Had a huge run in singles yesterday and has advanced into the gold medal match on Championship Sunday in pro singles. And that's going to sail long there by Tina Pisnik. So here's this new ball playing very fast right now. Yeah, Pisnik's dink just held up a ball too high and an easy forehand put away down the middle. I really like this partnership of Connor Garnett and Elise Jones because they're two of the most consistent players we have on the whole tour, so they're never going to beat themselves. you got to bring your A game to take this team out. So as you said, kind of a livelier, brand new Vulcan ball, and Pisnik has to adjust to that. This ball flying off her paddle, and there's two kind of unforced errors. Um, a player walking around uh, the court has distracted uh, the player, so they're gonna wait a second here. And another great lob and a, an early celebration there by Elise Jones. Elise and Jones, one of the best players to watch. I absolutely love watching her. She is so much fun on the court. Great energy, all around amazing player. An early seven to zero lead. I don't think that this is gonna be how every game is. But yep, and there's a timeout there by uh, Pisnik and Barr after being down 07 early. So we'll take our own break and be right back with you here in Lakeville, Minnesota. Rate, we understand that life is about more than mortgages. Our aim is to empower you on your holistic journey to well-being and longevity by helping you achieve your financial and personal goals. 
Our new, completely free rate app focuses on community, nutrition, and exercise, as well as offering a variety of financial tips and tools. The rate app was built to support your mind, body, and spirit, helping to simplify your life and reduce your stress. Download the rate app and start living your best life. Back live, Danny Jensen, Dave Weinbach, 7-0 early lead here in game one for Elise Jones and Connor Garnett. Tina and Deckel are going to try to get on the board right here. And that's going to sail wide, so they do indeed get a point on the board here, Danny. What hands by Connor Garnett. Oh my gosh. Deckel with a slam right into his, but you know what? If you know the teeter-totter, anything you want to call it, the seesaw, the ball goes up, your hands go down. He was just in the right position at the right time. And uh, Deckel Barr a little out of sorts in this early stage of this match from the tall, Israeli born and raised. And at least bringing some heat with that two handed backhand. She just loves that shot. 8 1 here. Yeah, and Jones not able to catch up to that forehand. They got a second serve here at 8-1 in this best two out of three games to 11. Win by two. There you go. There's the athleticism and jumping uh, for their earnings by Deckel. Something I talk, touched briefly on uh, in the pregame. But we were looking forward to this quarterfinal mixed pro doubles match here on Grandstand Court. All four quarterfinals shaping up to be highly competitive here. That's going to sail long. So let's see if Piznik and Barr can make a run here, Danny, and try to make this game one competitive after being down 7-0 early. Deckel really going for his serve. It's something I touched on. You know, when it's hitting, it's very difficult to return, so I understand why he's doing it. Yeah, Garnett, so dangerous off that backhand side, can take that two-hander and basically go any direction. Likes to roll it with topspin. He doesn't slice many of those. He comes out and over, which brings the ball down in the court and gets the ball low. And Pisnik handling that one easily. Terrific volley there. I thought she might go around. I thought it was yeah, there. I, I kind of have the angle from where I'm sitting, but I just am not quite sure if she would have really had to have hit a nice ball. And I think on the run, everything like that, just a little bit tight. Oh, her follow through. Her paddle hit the post, so that's going to be a point for Piznik, Piznik and Barr. This is going to be a great view. Oh, no, you might not be able to see it. Oh, you do see it right there on the top. Yeah, in the follow-through, Danny, 
you have to, first of all, make contact with the ball on your side of the net. And if you follow through with your paddle into any part of the net or the stanchion or the post, that is a violation. And really good leave there by Connor Garnett. You know, we talk a lot about letting out balls go out, but that's much harder skill than it sounds. I actually call it a skill. And one of the drills I do with some of my students is I'll put them in the transition zone or even a foot behind the kitchen line, and I'll drive balls to them, and they have to make a decision. Let the ball go out or hit it. And you do that a thousand, two thousand times, and, and it gets into your absolute memory in terms of your brain when balls are going to stay in. And it's a, it's a drill and a skill that I don't think is practiced enough. Now, I, you know, another question for you might be like, you know, what are other signs that you can look for to see somebody's hitting a ball too hard? That you might want to touch on that too. Yeah, for me, the signs I look at is if, if I see my opponent taking a really big backswing, I know they're going to drive it. If they're coming from below the net and they speed it up, there's a very high probability it's going to go out. Yeah, Connor just fluffed up those dinks too high, and you can't do that to a man with the length and the skill and the ability of Deco Barr. So they are at 3-9, trying to claw their way back in this game one of this mixed pro quarterfinal. Yeah, yeah Deco sitting on that backhand, really anticipating that ball. Well, after a great Ernie by Barr. It's what makes Deckel such a tough mixed doubles player specifically is he has a lot of range, but he has really good footwork as well and one of the best Ernies in the history of pickleball. Yeah. Making a little run here, you know, getting up to that five, five nine. A smart timeout from Connor and Elise Jones. Don't let them get too close. I assume they might take another one at seven or eight if they end up getting there. So we'll take our own timeout here at the Pickleball Central National USA Pickleball Championships here in Lakeville, Minnesota. We'll be back live with you here, Danny Jensen. For many of us, we just charge ahead because planning for your future takes time. And right now, thinking about your financial future takes on new meaning. At Baird, our financial advisors have guided individuals and families to achieve their goals through every crisis evolution and groundbreaking idea for over 100 years. That's the difference between thinking you're ready for what lies ahead and knowing you've planned for it. Now that's different. Discover the Baird difference. Welcome back, Pickleball friends. We are in game one here on the grandstand court as the crowd has moved in here and the drama builds here in this mixed doubles quarterfinal. Great hands from Deckel. And you see at least going behind him again and getting it just all around great play. Great move by, uh, great Ernie by Jones, but just didn't do anything with the backhand. Deckel being the rock that he is, hanging in there. If they get another timeout, or if they get another uh, point here, I don't be, I'm, I'm not, wouldn't be surprised to see another timeout. And Barr goes for the big serve that clips the net and goes wide, so they'll have a second serve here at 7-9-2 here in game one. Yeah. 
And Jones not quite ready for that body shot. Oh, and a very oh costly missed third in the yes. net. Could have put a little bit more pressure on him, but that's all right. So Garnett and Jones gonna try to get to 10 here after being up 10-3, or 9-3. Oh, and a great dipping forehand drive off the Connor Garnett forehand. Gets them to the all-important 10 number and game point. Oh, and Garnett got the look that he wanted. So they'll have another game point here with Jones serving to Pisnik at 10-8. Deco read that one. He set it up exactly what he wanted. He put the ball in the middle. He, he knew exactly what he was getting there. I think if you're Garnett and Jones, you've got to be really careful with any dinks to the Deco bar backhand. There's just no reason to go there. He's too long, he's too quick, he's too good at that Ernie move, so why give him the opportunity? Deckel is just turning it on. But why? Like you said, why? There, I don't think there's, an, there's a reason at that point. You're kind of in control of the point. They're scrambling a little bit. That's an amazing backhand overhead. You know, in my opinion, <laughs> one of the toughest shots in all of pickleball. Yeah, I didn't think Carnett should have come over that far. That was a real stretch. And he gets a foot fault here. So we're here at 10-10. Yes, really barely. good call with that right toe. Wow, what a point. Great defense there by Tina Pisnik. So after being down 3-9 early, they have tied this up in game one at 10 apiece. Oh, and wow. a huge let's go by Deco Barr after that forehand winner and, down the line. I, I was telling people, look for this. The big serve followed by the big drive of Deco Barr. And Garnett and Jones say, not yet. This game is not over. And they will get the ball back in their hands, serving at 10. 11. Seven to one run for Pisnik and Barr. Oh, and a costly third shot drop in the net here. In a very rare unforced error off that two-handed backhand for Garnett. He had the angle, he even saw it himself. He knows that was a small, small error. I think he's missed two of those Watch in 2024. Big, Watch the big serve. And that ball goes out, and I, I know it, exactly what he's saying. And he might be right. Did she cross the plane she of might, the net? It, he might be right on the second foot that's planted, but they're not challenging. They're, they're giving him, he, and referee says no. So when so, Pisnik made their Ernie, and she we might be went able to get after a replay the ball with her backhand, yes. without making contact with the ball, she is not allowed to cross the plane. Let's see if she does here. It's going to be her second foot. So the first foot does not, but the second foot right here no, I think that I, it's too close to call. They're not going to call that. And then ball goes obviously out. And the so paddle was not over the What line. a comeback for Pisnik and Barr after being down early in that game one. Wow. 
We'll take our own break here, and we'll be right back with you for more live action here from the Grandstand Court. We are back live here, Grandstand Court. That's going to sail wide there by Jones. So, so a how quick does, side out. How does the momentum shift now that there was a big comeback? What what has to happen now in this game too? I think if Garnett and Jones get down early. It's going to be really tough for them from a mental perspective, Danny. I think they need to get an early lead here or could go downhill quickly after Pisnik and Barr with an incredible run. So there we have a warning on the serve. Yes. So he'll get a redo on the first one. On the second one, he will then lose his serve. Um, but, you know, Deckel's pushing it. So um, we knew that he would do this. And... It's something that's kind of like one of the key points that I was talking about earlier in the game. Just out. Just and maybe we take a look at that, at that uh, serve. So here we go. You might see maybe Pulls, pulls, yep, released Tossed above, up. released above the waist, yep. and then a little bit of a... The ball must drop from your hand. You cannot toss it up in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. So then, correctly called. Absolutely, absolutely. Good call there. But I like Deco pushing that because that's a strength for him to set up that third shot drive um, for him and Tina. Uh, that's just too easy there for Deckel. Connor Garnett's got to pick his spots on where he attacks the ball to. I'd highly recommend he he bring pace to Piznik and not to Deckel Barr. Unless Barr is cheating hard middle, then go behind him. That's where he's got a target. That was an absolutely great pickup by Tina. That drive was dipping hard over the net. Um, Connor Garnett probably surprised that actually she got that back. Deckel likes the ball there, huh? Set it up really well. He worked that point super, including a, a great Ernie move. And I think Elise has to be really careful about digging down Deckel's line. I think if you're Jones and Garnett, you're giving Barr way too many touches. I think they got to target Piznik more because Deckel's so dangerous off both sides and can speed the ball up from anywhere, can take it any direction. And that's a great drop by Piznik. Oh, and I think that she was willing the ball over in a way, and they're calling a hindrance.
as this ball comes right here, oh, I, I'm wondering if they're saying that it was out. So she called out after she hit the ball. I think that's what they're saying. And then Elise Jones and Connor Garnett are arguing that they said it a little bit too late. And so because they said it a little bit too late, they're trying, they're, they're trying to figure out what's going on. So the referee's going to bring the players together and, and explain to them what his ruling and is, and we are going to play on. Should we? Can we see a replay again? Because um, that ball, I think, was out. And but they, but they played it, and then called it afterwards. And the right thing is that the ball was out. Let's let's watch the replay here. Okay, no. we're back live. No worries. We wanted to get live playing here. So here it is. Okay, here's that Ball replay. Comes. Actually, I think that's tough. That's tough. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, that's a really good choice there by Garnett. That's where I think he has to target his attack balls. I agree with you. Is, is come at Pisnik a little more and stop trying to challenge Barr as much. Unless Barr cheats too much, hugging the middle and leaning to his right. Then you're okay going behind him, but you gotta be really sensitive to Barr jumping that kitchen. And that's correctly called long. Another really good deep lob in the court by Elise Jones. That definitely would have been in. Barr had to hit that. Oh, and that's the worst lob that Jones has hit in this match. She's been consistently getting them in the back third of the court, but that one uh, would have barely gotten to half court in an easy overhead. <laughs> Folks, if you're wondering why Jones is hitting so many balls to Deco Barr, she's trying to keep him honest. She's trying to keep him on his side of the court. And that's a very rare unforced error from the Garnett backhand. In my opinion, the, the best two in the backhand that we have in the game, maybe in the history of pickleball. Going for a lot on that on that Ernie with the backhand. He usually does hit that though. Oh, and Barr going to the left a hand. A left-handed pickup on the... Wow. Duckle Barr is playing great right now. Great hands there by Barr. Just getting that ball back in play. So look at a second serve here at 6-3 after taking a dramatic game one comeback. Good play from Deckel there, setting it up. Tina's keeping Connor honest by faking the Ernie. All right, so with a side out here, let's see if Jones and Garnett can make a run here and come back and capture game two to force a deciding game three.
And Garnett trying to get it so close to the net, knowing that Bars Ernie is such a threat. Since it was 9-3 in the first, it's been a 16-4 run for um, Barr and Piznik. And obviously taking control of this game. And that's a very rare footfall called on Deco Barr. You don't see him getting called on this very often. Let's see the replay. Yes, his left foot was touching the kitchen line when he took off, and that's a violation, so correctly called. Excellent job by the referees. You know, that's what they're trained to look at, Danny, is they're not watching the ball. They're trained to watch the feet at the kitchen line. So after a couple points here by Jones and Garnett, a very smart uh, timeout, in my opinion. We'll be right back with more live action here at the Grandstand Court. Follow your vibe. Busy. Flavor for every vibe. Big it up, big it up. Yeah. Go, go. Welcome back to Grandstand Court. 7-5 in the second game. Barr and Piznik are up. They they came back and stole game one um, after being down 7-0 to 9-3. So, Dave, what do you think uh, going into this, the last part of this second game? I think we're going to get another really dramatic game. Wouldn't be surprised to see another 12-10 here, Danny. And that's going to just sail wide, and Jones very disappointed in herself. It's a ball that she usually makes. It's one of her absolute favorite shots in pickleball is going behind the guy down the line with that little forehand roll. Oh, and there's a freebie there. So that gets Piznik and Barr three points away from advancing on into the semifinals. You know, after Deco got called on that warning, he's still pushing it, and I really love that from him because it is a weapon. Terrific attack balls there, put, keeping the pressure on Piznik. Great job there by Garnett. So they got to get off this five here, five eight one. Excellent play by Barr, really leaning in at that line and making his presence felt. Fantastic court coverage from Connor Garnett. And a really great move by Elise Jones because it made Barr change his shot. Excellent overhead there by Garnett. Elise has got to try to reset that and get the ball cross court. Barr just too powerful, too dangerous. from Deckel doing how, the ATP from around him. <laughs> how did Deckel Barr catch up to that ball? I am not sure. And could have at least have dug an out ball, possibly. Um, 
We'll have to take a look at that in a second. Yeah, really good attack there by uh, Garnett into the Pisnik body. 9-6-2, they're two points away here. Barr going big on the serve. Really picking his target well. I like how he goes right at the body let's, there. Let's see this serve again on game point. Let's watch the serve. He's pushing it. I love it. Wow, what a return. And we will play on here with a side out at six. 10, terrific attack ball here by Garnett with his forehand roll down the middle. Seeing Dekelbar sitting strong backhand. Great choice there by Garnett. and he jumped off oh. the kitchen line, correctly called. So it's gonna be 7-10-1. Yep, easy call there. I thought Deco was gonna speed up that ball down the line when he came up to it, just Connor cheating over a little bit, but. Another high one down the middle, right to the bar forehand. So that is not a way to get back in this match, to fluff one up high down the middle. All right, they got another shot at it, 7-10-2. Yeah, Elise Jones continuing to try to challenge Deckel Bar to no avail. So that'll set up two more potentially match points right here at 10-7-1. Yeah. Oh, and Barr got there in plenty of time. It was basically two steps and he's there. But they'll have another serve at this. Here to goes. take this match. So they're going to be on the switch. Let's watch Deckel take this. If he, if he gets the ball, he's going to drive it at Elise. Switching. And there you have it. After an amazing comeback in game one, Pisnik and Barr roll to take game two and advance on into the semifinals here on Pro Mixed Doubles Day. This, Dave, was, this was the last last game here on, champ, on Grandstand Court. YouTube audience, thanks for sticking with us all day. This is Dave the Badger Weinbach, Danny Jensen. Thanks for being with us. See you tomorrow.